Welcome to Headlines. This is David Lichtenstein, and this week we are going to have a guest host, Harav Rabbi Yeshua Pfeffer. He's a, a Chavar Bezdin, and the Bezdin of Rabbi Asher Weiss. He has many other attributes. He's been with us many times. He's going to be hosting the program. It's going to be talking about Bezdin. Should we have To'anim, choosing the right Bezdin, building confidence in the Bezdin system after so much corruption, should we have an appellate system? Many other contemporary Bezdin Shilas, the guests will have from the, from the, the Bezdin Rabbi Shawais, the famous Rabbi Tzvi Gertner, he's a famous Dayan. We will have Rabbi Shmuel Honigwax and Rabbi Yaakov Tesla from the Veis Havad and Rabbi Tuvia Stern. We will have both Tayanim, a lawyer in Yushalayim. Should be a fascinating program. Before we begin, I do want to mention a number of interesting things. We will have a, lot, a number of very interesting topics coming up in the next few weeks. We'll be talking about kashras, the difference in halacha and as well as competence between the major hechsherim, both in Eretz Yisrael and in America, here where we live. We'll be talking about marriage. Are we educating our children enough? I mean, the boys are coming from one place, one total place. The, many of the boys use Internet. We had, we've had Rosh Hashiva say they, they live on the Internet, maybe in places they shouldn't have gone. We have girls who are coming from seminary with stars in their eyes. Is a half an hour schmooze, chassin schmooze, really do it? I mean, before you drive, can you get a half an hour course and jump into a car? Should we be having maybe a 10 or a 15 hour course? Should we be teaching our boys? Is it ever an appropriate time to leave Kell? We will have on a really big guide. A big Lamden is going to talk about that. We're going to be talking about alternative medicine, kinesiology. Some say it's Avaid Zara. Some swear by it. We'll be talking about many other interesting and contemporary topics. While we're talking about contemporary topics, I want to share with you a vart. In this week's parsha, last week's parsha, depending on when you're living, it says if the Yaakov has his epic battle with the archangel Sari Shalesav, what does he say? Vayishal Yaakov, Yaakov is v'yemer hagita noshemecha. I want to know your name. And what does he answer? He says lama zetishal ishmi. Question: Why did Yaakov want to know his name? I mean, what if he would have said my name is Zalman or Beryl? Or Yankel. I mean, well, what would have Yaakov done with it? He would have put it in his Rolodex, like Lamayin Afkimina. And if he really wanted his name, <laughs> what does he say? Lama Zetisha Lishmi. I mean, um, Yaakov had him by the neck. He had to go say Shira. He was begging to leave. Just like he asked him for the bracha, he should have said, also, I want to know your name. But Yaakov seems satisfied, and he lets him go. So it's not the first time, we, well, it's the first time, it's not the only time you have this Shiloh. By my Menoyach, he also asks the Malach, Mishemecha, what's your name? But the Pasik says, why? Ki Yavai, I want to know your name so that when you come, when we hear your name, we should be able to be Mechabit you. Ki Yavai vi Chabducha. In other words, he was asking, what's your handle so that I could use it in the future? So what is Yaakov asking him? He's saying, you're sorry, Shalesav, and I defeated you. But, Kal Yisrael is going to have many times we're going to battle who are, who are Yetzirah, who are Satan, who are Malach HaMavis. We're going to keep bumping into you. So, what is your name? How can I pass on to your children? When somebody comes with this and this name, we should be able to tell them, uh-uh, this is the Satan, it's the Malach HaMavis here. So what does he answer him? He answers him, Lama Zetisha Lishmi. So what does the Medrash say? Don't ask me my name, because my name keeps changing. So what does that mean? Three and a half thousand years ago, four thousand years ago, maybe his name was Esav. Then it became Lavan. Then it became Paray, Izevel. It had became Alexandra Mukdin. Was it Antiochus? Was it Hellenism? Was it Trianus? Aspanionis? Was it Titus? Who destroyed the second bias? Was it Paulus? Was it Chelmenitsky? Right? Do you know that when they destroyed the Yeshiva in Volusian, they closed Volusian in the late uh, 18th century. Uh, so um, they said that there were five Kitim in the Yeshiva when they closed the Yeshiva. There were the Bali Musa, the Bundists, the Marxists, the Zionists, and the Communists. Five different groups. I ask you, that was the battle, and ultimately Volusian collapsed. There was no way to keep it open anymore. I ask you, do you know anybody who became a Bundist 
Do you know a bachu who had a Yetzirah to, to become a Marxist? Right? So it keeps changing. So he says, the Malach tells him, he says, Yaakov, you want to know what I look like? You know what? Your Rabbanim, your Gedolim, they're going to have to be very smart and keep it. I keep morphing like a virus. You know, every virus, they keep needing new antibiotics because the virus has morphed. Do you know that in World War I, it was primarily between France and Germany, right? It was a trench warfare. And it moved by inches, literally. You know, they would slog it. They'd advance 100 feet. They'd back up. People dug. It was trenches, trenches. So there was a, 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 a French minister who built something. His name was Maginot. M-A-G-I-N-O-T. He built the Maginot line. It was considered a marvel. It cost them, in today's, $50 billion. It drained the French economy, was it? It was a, a series of trenches, of bunkers, between France and Germany that were air-conditioned. They had incre- And they were indestructible by artillery, shells. So what did that mean? He said, nobody will ever pass the Maginot line. France is secure. What they didn't realize is weapons had changed. The Second World War was not about trenches anymore. It was about blitzkrieg. You, these, these tiger tank corps, they moved at 40, 50 miles an hour. They raced. It was, about, it, was about, uh, it was about planes. It was about ultimately about jets. It was about you know, aerial warfare. Trenches became much less important. What did the Germans do? They ran all. They, they didn't attack the Magadet line. They went through Brussels. They came through the top of France. French fell in a, France fell in a couple of weeks. When they asked the Prime Minister what's with the Magadet line, he said it isn't anymore. They, it, it was it was a relic of history. Battles change. Are we fighting yesterday's battles, or rather today's battles with yesterday's tools? That's what the Malach says. Why do you want to know my name? You better, you know, I had a fellow, he came to me, he's a chassidish fellow. He's chassidish, he says, my Rebbe for the last 25 years talks about one thing. He says, what is it? He says, medaf achti geben von de goyim. You have to be careful, nicht to hop to learn, that not to have anything to do with goyim. Don't have, he says, don't talk to a goyim. Do you know anybody who has... Because that episode had to turn mid goyim, something happened to it. I mean, is that the battle we're facing today? You ask a yeshiva bacha today, what's he to her or a married person, why, or, or 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 a balabas? Is your problem that the goyim, you, 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 the goyim are doing something to you? And we have totally different set of problems. Are people's marriages failing because of goyim? Do you know that Rabbi Yashiber said, even though the the kalim of the base hamigdash never changed. But the Chatzaitres changed. Every Melech brought in his own Chatzaitres. So Rabbi Yosheber said, the Avoidah never changes. What's the Chatzaitres? The Chatzaitres are the trumpets, the clarions, the call to Avoidah, the call to service. He says, the call to service, what inspires you? Every generation, every Melech has to find the inspiration of that generation. What's talking to that generation? You know, our program this month, something amazing happened. We had 100,000 downloads. What did we speak about? We spoke about vaccines and halacha dating and halacha marijuana and halacha. We spoke about Brett Kavanaugh. If you would have a rub, would be accused. Somebody from 35 years ago would accuse him. And you know what? 100,000 people downloaded the program. We, and we ordered it. We know exactly how many from online, how many from the telephone, how many from the app. It's not a guess. We actually know every time somebody calls in. Because why? Because people want their Torah to be relevant. So when he says, Hagidili Mashimecha, what's your name? I want some, some sign. What is, he says, you know what? Lama Tishalashmi. When it comes to our children, we have to be constant to ourselves. What talks us? How do we find something in the Torah that talks to my current situation, that I could address my some tzara that I have in life, some type of a tzara, maybe some type of a, a, a moral dilemma? How do I deal with it? What is the appropriate answer? He says, Lama the tish. you have to keep searching and find them. There is no one recipe. We, the Torah, the, the sorry Shalaisa says, you know what, you better always be relevant because I'm going to keep changing. Let me share with you one more thought before we go on. <coughs> and I think it's a, a very relevant thought. You know, in the parish it says, Le- Leia is called Snua. Vayar Hashem ki Snua Leia. 
And I called Snua once. When Shemin is says, Ki Shama Hashem, Ki Snua Anoichi, I am hated. So it's interesting. The Rishonim debate, was she really hated or not? The Ravid says, no, she was hated next to her. But the Rush and the Daskenim, Valley Toysvis and others say, no, she was literally, Yaakov didn't like her. So the Zayra Kaddish asks, what's the purpose of telling us this? Why do we have to know that Leah was Snua? The Zayra is in Kofnandal and Amid Beis. And <clears throat> here's how I understand what the Zayra and the Mepharshim are saying. You know, ask a lot of people, like, why aren't you successful? And they'll start telling you, you know, child, so let's start from the beginning. My mother and my father, this was not a marriage made in heaven, let me tell you. In general, childhood, you know, you see people, they have like an idyllic childhood, like from the Bobsy twins or the, or, the, or the Brady Bunch, it's mamish, and everything's going wonderful, and the parents believe in them, and they're mechazik them, so therefore they have the lave of an Ari, and they're able to go, my story, you know, I wasn't so lucky, you know. Um, only 25 or 30% of marriages, by the way, are considered really happy marriages. Most people don't put the effort in that they need, right? So that means most of us come. So that, therefore, I'm not so successful. It's not my fault. I don't have a, such self-confidence. You know, well, just give in. For nonsense, not what I have, right? So the Zara Kaddish says, you know what? Even more suhaboinim. The best children, who is... Who is the basis? Who's Malchus by Israel? They had two children, two sets of children, seven children to Leah, the one who was called Snua, and two children to Rachel. Yaakov was in love with Rachel. Right? The Yaakov Oevis Rachel constantly says how much he loves Rachel. Leah was Snua. Yosef comes, it's true. Yosef, the dreamer, he grew up in that perfect house. And everything was right. His mother loved him. His father loved him. The mother he loved, the child he loved, he got all the emotional support. He was able to be a dreamer, to have, have visions and dreams. Wonderful. There are children like that. But what about Leah's called the Aim Habanim? And what do we know about her? Who comes from Leah? The unhappy marriage, the lack of Shalom bias, right? To a certain extent, the, the disinherited one, they lost the Bechayu, right? Who does it go to? Well, let's look at it. Kahuna, Levia, all the Malamdim of Klal Yisrael come from Shimon. Malchus comes from Yehuda. Bezdin comes from Yisachar. Zvulun, prosperity comes from him. What does that mean? You know what the Torah is telling you? It says, by Yaakov Avinu, the Mufarshim, or the Kliyakar, the Rechaim Velazhin, it says, it says, ya- Avram Avinu had a child to 99. Why does it tell us? You know what? You're going to have difficulty having children? Avram had to 99. You're going to have issues where you live? Avram went to war. You're going to have issues with your children? Avram struggled with difficult children. Why does it tell us Yaakov and the difficulty? Snua Leia? You know why? You come from that? Your, 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 your background? You know, your family wasn't like, like from the Bobsy twins? You know what? It's no excuse. Ruvain, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, Yisachar, Zvulun, all of them. The foundation of Klal Yisrael, it doesn't matter. You had a loving parent. Somebody loved you? That's enough. You don't need some picture-perfect thing, which is really 70% of all people. You know, it's interesting. Certainly two of the most successful and greatest minds of our generation or Steve Jobs, let's face it, the iPhone changed the world, apps changed the world, right? And Jeff Bezos, Amazon changed shopping. I know my kids, me, myself, I practically we never go to a store anymore. You get on the thing, you deliver whatever you want. Do you know both of them were abandoned by their parents? It's true, look it up. Steve Jobs and Jeff Bezos, both were abandoned, both were adopted. So what does that mean? That's what the Zaira Kaddish says. The, the Bnei Hasnua, they were the ones, Lamaisa, by Klal Yisrael, they became the greatest. So if your family, where you come from, wasn't this idyllic, idyllic, perfect picture, like the, the like a chocolate bar, like a Swiss chocolate bar, you know, the cow and the mountain with the snow on the top, if you didn't grow up that way, you know what? Welcome. What does Chazal say? It says, Klal Yisrael is nimshal zayis. Just like a zayis, the more you press it, the more oil comes out of it, so to Klal Yisrael. The more you stress them, the more they produce. It's not just that. Wine too. Gefen mimitzrayim tasiya. 
You take the beautiful grape, you put it into a thing, you jump on it, you crush it, you ferment it, it becomes the most amazing thing. That's what the Zaira Kaddish says we learn from the story of Leah. And by the way, if you want to see the Rosh and the Daskenim, and the Pasik Yil Ishne Nashim, Achas Huva, Dachas Nu, and Parshish Kisaitse, both the Rosh and the Bali Taisa say it's talking about Yaakov and uh, it's being Maramas on Yaakov and, and Leah. So, all we need is one supportive adult, and we can accomplish anything. Let's go to our riddle of the week. Since last week was about vaccinations, I thought I would ask Akasha that a riddle that has a little to do with vaccinations from the Parsha. The great Prima Godim, ah, the holy Prima Godim, it could take, it could spend hours, hours and hours trying to understand the, the oymek of the Prima Godim. Ask Akasha. He says, Yosef knew his brothers hated him. The Beferish and the... Uh, in the witch call it, first of all, the Torah says, V'yisnu'ayt s'nai yisai. And the, uh, the Sefer Hasidim says, he knew they meant his harm. So he says, how was he allowed, or even for Kibbe Dave'im, how was he allowed to go and put himself in their clutches? He says, you're over two, two is it? One is somebody who's misakin at me, who puts himself in a place of danger, is over on the Pasuk of Yishamr Lecha, and also on the, uh, the Pasuk of Laisasim Damen Bevesecha. If you put yourself in a place of danger, maybe by not being vaccinated, that's a debate, but certainly Yosef, he says he's over to love him. He's shamer lecha and leisasim damim. And I say and leisase. He says, even though there's a mitzvah of kibadav, you're not allowed to be over to averus for kibadav the uh, aim. So that is the question of the great prima gadim. And I leave that to you to come up with an answer. Let's go to our fabulous host, Agoyin Rabbi Yeshua Pfeffer. Shalom Aleichem, and welcome to Headlines to Yeshiva Shomailo. Uh, my name is Yoshua Pfeffer, filling in for Rav David. And this week we're going to be speaking about a very contemporary, very relevant, and very universal issue of Batei Din, um, of, uh, of Basin, which is a, a Jewish court of law, rabbinic court of law, that comes to adjudicate between two different litigants, between two parties. Uh, even as Yidin, and of course we encourage Achdus between us, and we encourage uh, unity in, in Kali Yisrael, uh, but we're still human beings, and, and as human beings, and as functional uh, human societies, we all have disputes, we have occasional disagreements and clashes, uh, arguments, and some of them involve um, financial ramifications. Um, this is something that you know, all of us have, and all human societies have, uh, throughout history, and, and of course there are many ways um, that people uh, resolve these disputes by um, trial by jury is common uh, today, trial by judge, trial by combat, or trial by duel, uh, many different ways. Uh, the the Torah tells us what, what it's, uh, uh, the, the way that, that, uh, that the Jewish people, uh, those who are nem and those who are faithful to the Torah, ought to resolve their disputes is uh, by means of going to the Shefet, going to the judge. Ki yiparamim chadavar lamishpat, bein dam le dam, bein din le din, bein nega le nega v'chulei. And then, v'kam savi ali, so you should go up to the Malkam, asher yifchar Hashem elokech haboi, and there you find kehan, when avim vel ha-Shefet, asher yiye bayami mahim. And of course, today we don't have the, the Mikdash, we don't have the Beit and Agadol in Yerushalayim, uh, but we have the Batei Din, the Batei Din that, that Chazal speak about, uh, in every in every community in every city, uh, Chazal tell us the Gemara tells us in Maseches Gittin, uh, that in the pasuk uh, in in Pashas Mishpatim ve'Ela Mishpatim Asher Tosim Lifneim. So the Gemara tells us Lifneim ve'Lo Lifnei Ovdei Kichavim. And from here we learn the Issa to go to Arkais, to go to to non-Jewish courts of law. And when we have a dispute that requires re- uh, a resolution, um, then our our Chiyav our Piden is to go to uh, Din Torah to go to uh, Dayanim, who will give us a judgment based on uh, based on Din Torah. We, we all know the lesson of the of the Rambam, very severe uh, lesson of the Rambam in uh, the end of Hilchas Sanhedrin, um, also brought in in the Shulchan Aruch um, in uh, the beginning of Cheshen Mishpat. And and the Rambam said that someone who comes to non-Jewish courts of law, he says Harid Rasha, he says. Uh, uh, so we know it's a very, it's a very severe uh, iser, and and we know that the that the Shulchan Aruch in um, in Simon Gimel uh, speaks about the the, the to come before three dayanim, 
Um, uh, it's possible also to go to a Dan Yachid, but generally we go to a panel of, of three Dayanim. And, and today, because today many of us uh, live as a part of Western society, and a lot of our dealings, a lot of our, of our, of our give and take, in, in, whether in the business world or whether just in general culture, is imbued, is influenced by secular culture, so the, the, uh, uh, um, a significant part of that culture is also a secular legal culture, a, a legal culture that we're really a part of. That's what we hear about in the news. This is how our neighbors go to court. This is how the businesses that we conduct um, uh, resolve disputes. Uh, of course, when, when, there are, when there are non-Jews involved uh, who generally won't go to basin, but would rather go to, uh, to a court. And, 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 um, and the fact that this is a culture that we live in also raises significant challenges to the based in setting. Um, I know about this from my own experience uh, as a Dayan uh, in, in, uh, in Yerushalayim Basin for a number of years, also somebody who's represented both in, in Basin and sometimes in the courts. And, um, and, uh, and, and this raises a lot of questions. For example, Al Pi Din, the Shochana tells us in Chesh Mishpat, Simon Yutalad, that there's no there's no chiyuv for based in to give its reasons for the decision. Plenty at the plenty at the zakai, and and that's it. Um, but certainly the culture, the legal culture that we're used to, um, that that people come and uh, and uh, and and come to and and they're prepared to come to a based in, um, they, they'll often feel that there's something unjust or there's something which is unfair if the dayanim don't give uh, don't give the reasons. So should Bate Din today adopt this general uh, practice of giving reasons uh, or not? Uh, another question is, is appeal. Um, in, in the general court system, of course, we're used to the right of appeal. Uh, the right of appeal comes from a, a, a basic kind of standard of fairness um, that, that you never know if, if you've been, um, if perhaps the, 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 the specific justices that heard the case uh, maybe made a mistake. Maybe they got up on the wrong side of bed. Maybe they, you know, they had a bad mood, or they, or they didn't like you, or they just got it wrong legally. And you never know. And and that's why there's this kind of right of appeal um, that that makes sure that if if you really think you've been hard done by, and and this is a, a wrong and bad decision, then you you have a right to to take it to the to the next uh, level of the court and to appeal the the decision. Of course, in in based in, um, in based in there's no such thing. Of course, there, there's a there's a certain hierarchy um, within Bate Din, a local base in and, and the central base in the Gemara Sanhedrin, uh Samad Bay speaks about a certain hierarchy of Bate Din, um, but there's still no formal appeals court. There's no there's no way um, that you can that you can appeal there's no official appeal in some cases where there's a, a, um, a grievous, a really serious mistake, then the, the ruling can be revoked and sometimes based in could even be a uh, Giving me chayav to compensate for, for mistakes in the mishpatim and the but generally basin acha basin loy daika. One basin doesn't check after another basin. So you go to a regular basin, and uh, whatever they say is final, and and there's no right of appeal. So again, because of the culture, the legal culture that we're influenced by, that we really live as a as a part of, uh, the question is: Should should bate din or can bate din uh, adopt uh, an appeal system in in the, in the bate din? Of Eretz Israel, um, which are a part of the state-sanctioned um, uh, re- uh, courts. But one of the state-sanctioned courts is a rabbinical court that deals mainly with uh, issues of uh, personal status of uh, marriage and divorce. So then there is an appeal system. This was a, a huge uh, controversy uh, in, in the, when, when the state was uh, when the state of Israel was established, in uh, or even before then actually. Mishpat um, Yehuziel uh, has a famous chuva about it in Chush Mishpat and. Uh, and but, but the, the question is: Is it would it be correct for Batavim today to adopt um, appeal system? What about Tzernim appearing in 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 uh, in, in based in? Uh, of course, in, in the legal system that that we're uh, a part of culturally, uh, going to court without an attorney is is unheard of. Of course, you bring, you bring an, an attorney. Uh, in terms of of halacha, so um, the, the, you're supposed to hear the the the, the ballet din themselves. You're supposed to hear the litigants themselves. Should Bate Din allow Tehanim? Uh, should they encourage Tehanim? Uh, how should this uh, How should this be be regarded? So, 
these are just a few of the questions. And of course, there are many, many more questions, both in terms of procedure and in terms of the substance uh, that what they didn't have to deal with today, which is sometimes very complex uh, legal uh, substance, such as corporation law, uh, think about medical malpractice, these kind of things that were not, you know, not, not, we don't have classic, uh, classical texts on, on such issues. And, and of course, they, they raise a, a lot of questions for, for Bata Din. And today we're going to try to discuss these challenges, these issues, and the way that the Bata Din today uh, try to, to navigate them, try to be effective, as effective as possible, and also try to be as attractive as possible. Because uh, as we know, even though, like we mentioned before, going to court is a, is a, severe, uh, is a severe transgression, is a severe issue, issue which is agreed upon by, by all posts. And we also know even in in Eretz Israel, where where the archives are generally presided over by by, by Jewish uh, by Jewish judges, Jewish justices, uh, still the, the the agreement of of all poskim uh, and and all dayanim from uh, Chazanis and and before and, and after is that uh, there's still no heter to go to archives unless you have a heter from from based in to go. Um, but in spite of that, is uh, still we know that many people do go to secular courts, either because they feel that they won't get proper justice from the Bate Din, uh, because they think the Bate Din are too Hamish and too part of the community, and then and, and other, other, other Huras Hatter, which um, certainly there, there's no uh, legitimizing such Huras Hatter, but on the other hand, there's also certainly a, a duty on the part of the Bate Din to be as professional as possible, to have as good an image as possible, so that people will feel comfortable uh, going to Basin. So that's what we're going to be discussing, um, how Basin handle these challenges, and how do they make sure that they're doing uh, as, as good a job, the best job that they can possibly do, in order that people should feel comfortable to come and litigate their disputes, their discussions, their, their quarrels uh, that we all have sometimes, and if we don't, then friends of ours do. Uh, in the proper based in setting. So we're privileged to have with us today Harav Tzvi Gartner. Uh, Rav Gartner is an av based in on based in Darche Torah, uh, which is under the leadership of Hagoin uh, Rav Oshavais Shlita uh, here in Yerushalayim. Uh, Rav Gartner is also the, the author of um, probably the definitive sefer uh, still in, in the market today on Kfir Beget, on, on Kfir in, in Gitin. Uh, which is, of course, a huge issue both in the United States and, and in Eretz Israel. Uh, also one of the uh, founding members of uh, based in Vat and in Vahira in, in, uh, in New City, uh, operating today, and, and also founding editor-in-chief of, uh, of Tvunos, which is a, a, a journal, a Torah journal. So thank you, Rav Tzvi, uh, for being with us today. And um, if I can open with, with a question, which um, it's a question which I think disturbs or, or uh, is, is a kind of call for caution for people who, who want to go to based in, um, but often are involved in, in modern questions, modern questions of um, corporations, stocks, uh, shares, and modern contracts with, uh, which are full of legal intricacies, and, and they're concerned about whether, um, whether based in, who don't necessarily have the kind of legal uh, training that, that judges have on courts, uh, whether they have the kind of tools to be able to to deal in, a, in, a, in an efficient and in a, uh, in a piercing way uh, with these kind of questions. Uh, how would you respond to the person who's really, you know, he wants to be mechaimed into, or he wants to go to base in, uh, but he has this kind of niggling uh, or lingering concern about, about the, the, the qualification of the Dayanim to deal with these kind of issues? Well, uh, obviously it's a very good question. Yes, it's definitely a concern. The truth is, when I first began dealing with Chesh and Mishpat and Dayanis 30-plus uh, years ago, there were a lot of Dayanim that indeed had difficulty in accessing the pertinent information and then integrating it into the halachic dialectic. Over the years, there's been significant improvements on this count. But of course, there's always room for improvement. Today's Dayanim are very cognizant of this issue. They know how to interact with professionals who assist them in accessing and internalizing the information they need. It also helps that today there are many orthodox Torah knowledgeable professionals. So really the dying and the professional are speaking the same language to at least to some extent. Uh, so you would consult with, with, with 
you know, on, in in cases you consult with these professionals and and absolutely, absolutely, we do that all the time in in Eretz Yisrael. Uh, from Bosch Weiss, uh, our Rav Basin, he has an, uh, an entire list of professionals who who uh, who who come to his showroom and he makes use makes use of, of their knowledge. You know, right, and them. and if you get different, I mean, obviously there's sometimes differences of opinion, so you're going to have to kind of make the the decision of which opinion you you go with, but you do that based on you know on on, yeah, on yeah, of course, of course. your assessment the, the next, of yeah of course the next step is as, once you gather the information is the next step is the design has to internalize information and determine how it fits into the into the halachic dialogue mm-hmm. and of course that's something that he alone can do and the the professional can't really help him on that but definitely mm-hmm. the first stage the first step is interacting with the professionals. Sometimes you have a problem that, that you have a dyan who thinks that he that he that since he's a dyan is a lawyer also and that's a big problem. Mm. But uh, but but most m- most dyanim nowadays uh, are aware of the aware aware of this problem of this issue and they know how to interact properly with professionals. Mm. Mm-hmm. And and uh, uh, in 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 general, uh, your 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 assessment in in botted in in general is that they they've got this worked out. Meaning you know the the you know the the. Uh, do, do sometimes do, do you advise people to bring attorneys into the based in into the based in setting in order to to clarify the situation, or, or you leave it to you know to have the attorneys kind of fight it out, or, or do you leave it to the based in to actually uh, investigate and, and to figure it out? Okay, well, this, this it's a little bit complicated. Um, obviously, for, uh, we, we 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 always in, encourage people that uh, the, the litigants that, that any, any any information any professional professionals they want to, they want to present to based in they're they're welcome to do so. We welcome it. The reason mm-hmm. being is because we want people to feel uh, comfortable that, that that they've had that they've had their day in court. On the other hand, uh, a professional the opinion that that that, that, was, that was presented by one side is a little bit suspect. So what we usually do is, is is that even even after we've got all the information from each side and all the legal the expert opinions from each side, we'll get our own expert opinion, which of course we will share with it. With, we will share with the with, with, with the parties and give them an opportunity to comment, etc. Mhm. Mhm. And 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 in in general on the question of I know this is a big halachic question, of course, uh, about Tehanim appearing in court. Um, you're in favor of Tanim, against Tanim. What's your personal experience with with the, with the question of, of having Tanim in court in in the basin? It's hard to say. Meaning, for instance, in the based in uh, Vadadinvo Ra, where I'm, where I'm, which, which I'm involved in in, uh, in New City, and also the, in the RCA based in in, uh, in Manhattan, there's a rule that they don't they don't allow Tanim. Uh, in the Vadin Ra, the reason why they made that rule was uh, 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 at the prompting of. Uh, as a prompt of many Gedoli where she she was in in America, the reason being is that very often uh, Tonim hinder more than they help. But uh, mm-hmm. I don't I don't feel that you can make that 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 that, 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 you, that, that you that you can always say that. For instance, by our our, our uh, in in Darky Taira, our uh, our opinion is that uh, you can't you can't make any rules. Sometimes, indeed, a tie-in is uh, would have, a thing, thing would have been just better if you wouldn't be there to begin with. Other other times, we feel that the tie-in has really has really uh, saved the day. Without him, we couldn't even get, get to get to the bottom of the matter. Mm-hmm. So again, it's, it's hard to say. It's hard. It's hard to make a to, to, to make a to make a call. On the one hand, you you can definitely understand the frustration of the Rosh Yeshivas and other people who who uh, who have seen who've been burnt. Who, who themselves have been burnt, or have seen other people burnt by tonium, that that's why they go to the extreme that just do away with it, do uh, do away with it totally. But uh, burnt by tonium because uh, because the tonium themselves are, can be corrupt or they can be too aggressive or you know what what's the what's the main what's the main I mean again in in the court system everyone brings brings an attorney. There's no such thing based almost going to court without an attorney. How is it so fundamentally different in in the basin setting? Um, I, 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 I imagine it's a good question. I don't really have a good answer. Part part of the answer could be that is because of what was uh, in the court system is more rigid, rigid, and, uh, and plus lawyers are themselves are uh, subject to review mm-hmm. by their. Uh, but whereas Tonim, you know, right, the bar, the, the bar association, whatever. Tonim is more like a yeah. free, free for all free kind for of all. Uh, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. But again, yeah. I. I I I I really do feel that it, that 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 is that is unfair to make a uh, blanket statement that all Tonyim are no good. There are plenty of Tonyim who do a great job. 
and, uh, and, uh, and 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 they actually help 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 move move the entire forward in a in a positive fashion. Right. Uh, so so um, so I've gone. Let me ask you something. I I know that you know from, from having been somewhat involved and certainly hearing about many uh, cases for for many years about you know the the big kind of burrus cases uh, that you've been uh, party to, and and often. Um, the impression is is that often, in the end, you know, when it's like the, a really big case and and when it's a, a complicated case, somehow it ends up in court anyway, and then people go twice. They they go first to the bureaus and then they they have to struggle in court too. Um, what's behind this phenomenon of kind of you know the the that 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 based in it, it's difficult at least in, in a bureaus, um, uh situation to kind of end it at, at the end of the bureaus and, and what kind of steps can be made to avoid this? You know, people think they're going to the bureaus and here they're going to sort it out in a kind of a more amicable way uh, without having to go through the, the strains and the pressures of the court environment. And then in the end, they get slept into court anyway. Yeah. Yeah, okay, listen, it's definitely a problem. What's behind the phenomenon? Uh, two things. First of all, the very makeup of bureaus is Zabla, where each side is represented, so to speak, by a member of the panel can be conducive to aber- aberration or at least deviation from the straight and narrow halakhic path. And B... Mm-hmm. Me- meaning what? That the actual... Uh, you, f- you find this in, in Zabla that, that, that each side is not... Each side is taking a side, meaning it's, it's not neutral. Right. No, it's not supposed to be like that. According, uh, uh, this, this, according to, the, to the real definition of boyrus, the, 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 the boyrus is supposed to is supposed to tread a very thin line between right. between, uh, between representing uh, representing and, and being at the end, right? Yeah, more, more, not, not so much representing. It's putting forward the arguments in favor of it, but not but not but not uh, losing his uh, judicial partiality. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's a problem that's that, 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 that's that's existed for the past four four to five hundred years already. Um, hmm. Okay, it's, it is a problem. Another problem right. is, uh, is 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 uh, I'm sad to say that uh, the the deterrence the, the factor against going to court is steadily declining, mainly because of the plethora pl- 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 of high-profile cases of bayers that, that sad to say end up in court. Years ago, it was practically unheard of. Today, the situation is closer to Kol Gadol Mechaver or Rosh Yisrael Maher, the base, the base mishpat. The base mishpat, right? To the court. Yeah. How can it be avoided? Good question. We'll maybe we'll discuss about, more, more about that later on. Uh huh. Meaning that there's a kind of a zilusa the be dinner kind of a zilusa the base mishpat that people are are, are less less. Um, it's become more kind of socially accepted, as it were, yes. to, to go to court, even though you know the the, the chumrah. You know, based on 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 Shochanar, based on Gemara, it's like you know, uh, super hammer thing, and still people allow themselves to to go to court. Unfortunately, that's the case. Yeah, we 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 see we see it uh, we see it very. Uh, Einenu, Einenu, ra, you know. yeah. Right, and and so I mean, if if we see people are willing to go to court, then perhaps it's a reflection of 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 certain problems that at least people perceive in. In in the basin system, what what would you say? You know, if I ask you like an open-ended question, what would you say uh, is is there to really be to, to be improved, to be um, to be fixed up in in the basin system in order that people should re- feel really confident and and be happy, you know, to to accept the basin, to to go to basin, to accept the psak. What can be done to to to, str- to strengthen the the bate din? Okay. Well, first of all, it's a little bit it's a little bit difficult for me to comment on the situation in in America because I'm active mainly in Israel. Okay. But in general, I would say most people are about professional, competent, dedicated, and ethical. How can we improve things? Of course, there's always room for improvement. No doubt about that. First off, I would quote something that Rokhaim Gedalia Simbolis Shlita from the Beit Hanadol and Eretz Yisrael. Right. So he was on. He was on the Panovich. He was on the Panovich case, which yes, was, uh, was on the Panovich case. One yes, of one uh, of the biggest controversies over here. Yes, absolutely. So he once wrote. Actually, actually, I wrote. I, he once told me uh, and, and dictated to me to me uh, to, uh, the, the following line: "Lo ha'ikar sheyeshu be'based on tamidi chachamim uvhakim sheyodam ravlim v'dinim ha'elo la'lacha la'maisa." Hey, you do know a kol mikra mikra le'gufa she'inyan. The first thing is you have to have confidence in Yanim who know. Who knows who knows the halachas? Who know who know how to get to the to, to, to the to the bottom of the heart of the matter? 
Mm-hmm. But and and who also don't know how to handle human you know relationships. I mean, they need to know the halacha. They also need to ha- be able to I think that the guy right, that the guy I think says somewhere that that a, a dai needs to have you know both of these skills, both a halachic skill and a human skill. You know, yeah. sometimes you yep. see the other who are big yeah. to but they don't know how to run the run the panel. Absolutely, yeah, okay, right. but uh, but uh, as I said, the, uh, that second part uh, is, 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 is the... You're saying the, the second part we find more competence than the, than, than the first yes, part? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, yes, but even, but even in the second part, there's two parts to it. There's, 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 there's interpreting what are the fact, what are the, the, the main points of the case, and... Uh, and getting to the bottom of it, so that, right. that, is, that is indeed a very difficult thing to do. That right. I, I once commented to a number of notes telling this one that that's the, 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 that's the main part of the, the entire, uh, getting right. the facts straight. Afterwards, uh, see, seeing w- which place and which shach uh, it, it, it fits into, that's the easy part, and you just smiled. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, that's a, second of all, there's a call, in the dine of the of Royce. The dine has to believe in himself. He has to have confidence in what his eyes see. You have to remember too that Elokim Nitzol Badas Kel Kodesh Baruch was there with him. Chazal mm-hmm. tell us tell us that Hafiyah Ruach Hakodesh be based in a be based in or in a be based medrash. The Chassam Sefer right. explains the Chassam Sefer explains that Ruach Hashem Aotzke Torah Lishma Asher Zorichim Lachavin HaEmet Afilim Lefi Teva Chachmosam Vesichlam Lo Yasigu Yadayim Toshia Kazu Vikom Kam Kodesh Baruch Hu Bechas VeYoyv Chachmosam Vechakim Lefi Shor. Or, or, even or, even though we find even though we find some Dayanim who say no, you know, I want to consult, I want to consult with with another Dayan, or I want to consult with, you're saying the Dayan should have confidence in in his own. He's sitting on the base, then he has to ma- make his mind up or make his decision. Absolutely, but uh, of course it, it, it's it's always good to uh, con- to uh, to uh, right. consult right. with to, other people or Lamosho, right. yeah, or Lamosho, the uh, Rabbi Yankov Lipius in his uh, biography Rabbi Yitzchok he we know that Rabbi Yitzchok was 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 the biggest mechadish uh, mechadish in the world, but after right. picking Rabbi Yankov Lipius writes that before Rabbi Yitzchok would write a tshuva, he would go through all the makoyris and 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 the salacho, including all the all the previous tshuvas, and then he would start get he would. Ro- 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 Roll up his sleeves and get to work. So yes, definitely the the the, the Dayan has to have confidence confidence in his in, in, in his decision. But it's, it's, it's not, not only is nothing wrong, but it's even it's even commendable for him to do to to do his due diligence and consult with his, with, his, with his colleagues. There's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that. It's very it's very good. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, but 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 the the, the Dayan has to uh, ultimately ultimately he has to realize a buck starts by him, and he has to do what he has to do. It's interesting. About 15 years ago, Ramento Shafran uh, repeated to me a conversation that he had with a very prominent Ravan Dayan. This Ravan Dayan was complaining about the rogue Rabbonim who engaged in Kfiyah Shalokidin. Nowadays, right. he would probably nowadays he would be, be complaining about other things, about uh, well, Kedushin, etc., whatever. I've got the same idea, right? We, we, we know about these uh, rogue Dayan. Okay. Right. right. So, Ro- so Romento told him, "Listen, you're right, but you know, be, instead of instead of uh, expending your energy about these rabbanim, you should ask yourself a different question. Why are the ladies going to these rabbanim in the first place? The answer uh-huh. is, uh, is if the if the if the legitimate body didn't didn't would do what they're supposed to do. If they would pass in kfi and yet to eat in ksuba when 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 the lover uh-huh. wants it, then the ladies wouldn't have to look elsewhere. On the other right. hand, true, ain't a dinel of mashen of royus, but as Rabbi Sol Slander points out." That's assuming that they have eyes, and as Rabbi, as Rabbi Yitzchel explains, the dying has to be absolutely sure that he has no hidden or sublime agendas that are distorting his vision. So again, right. it's, 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 it's a it's a geshe tarma oz. On the one hand, you have to have confidence in, in, in yourself. On the second, on the other, other hand, you have to keep on checking yourself. Right, uh, right. But for somebody so active, both in Eretz Israel and in in the United States, how, how would you say the party didn't compare? I mean, certainly in, in, in areas of Git, and I imagine there's a huge enough community because in, in Eretz Israel, you know, you can get put in prison uh, right. and have other means of, of enforcing uh, the Get right. that in, in the States or outside of Eretz Israel you just don't have. Um, yeah. so that's, I'm sure that's, uh, that's a very, that's a game changer, you know, in a big sense. In, in right. Other than that, you know, are there, are there significant differences or, or it's really a similar kind of system in terms of the, the body din? It's hard for me to say. I'm 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 mainly uh, active in Eretz Yisrael. I don't really know what know what uh, 
goes on so much in America. My my involvement in the new based in a new city is uh, very re- a very re- new recent thing the past year or so. So I don't I haven't had that much experience about what goes on in America. Um, mm-hmm. In gen in, in general, uh, th- 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 I would say that there are good people in both places. Uh, mm-hmm. that, you know, more than that, I can't say. It's a, it's <laughs> fine. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure you don't want to get in. There are good people in both places, and each and, and I'm sure each place has its own problems that, 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 and, 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 and areas for improvement. Right. Let, let me just m- mention one, one, one other um, issue, which uh, I just had this last week. So, somebody came um, to me that he was being to wear, um He was being to wear some contractor on on a real estate uh, on a real estate deal. And um, and he he was to pay him to a base in, and the contractor said, "Well, I, I'm the nitva, and and I want to schlep you to uh, to a base in in uh, some base in in Pneibrak. And it turns out that this base is a very uh, you know specific base in associated with a very specific kind of a, a group or, or sect. Um, and 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 the base in where he was to pay said, you know, well, there's nothing else that we can do." Um, how, how do we deal with this? With this, or is there a way, a way of dealing with this kind of? Um, I mean, it's a halacha of, of holy and nitva, but the halacha was given in a very different circumstance, where you have a central authority in each city, and then the question is, where, where does the nitva live? Today, it's like you have these, you know, many, many bate din, and the nitva gets to choose where he wants to go, um, and then often the tevea will kind of lose confidence in the process because he, he doesn't trust the, the, you know, the nitva's choice. Is, is there a way of? Um, uh, first of all, ha- how have you handled this in the past, and, and is there a way of of, of getting um, making this more efficient or, or try, trying to fix this up? Yeah. Okay. Well, first of all, what you mentioned about the sectarial based in in Benimbrak, that doesn't necessarily disqualify it. That, uh, yeah. If, if, if the competent, the competent. But uh, okay. But with, right. and, and, but definitely the problem is a problem. But. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm not so sure that the problem is because of the halacha halacha charnitza. I mean, for instance, halacha charnitza is really only only a, a, a later takana in, in, in the time in the time, times that they were showing it. According to the din of the Gemara, it's, uh, it's, it's the the Tobia can decide where to go. Right. And, uh, you know, but again, but right. but but but, but uh, you you, you just, just just like the nitva abuses the system uh, can abuse the system now. Uh, if, you, if you go back to the original, the, the, the tovea might be able to abuse the system. Uh, listen, no no system is perfect, uh, but they didn't. You do try to keep a, to, to, to keep a handle on it, and and and, and that they, they they say true halakha halakha But if the nitva comes and gives something that's totally off the wall, they don't allow it. Um, mm-hmm. Right. Um, another 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 point is that uh, this is really this is really more no, more 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 no get to America than Nazi throw throw, because uh, in America the uh, the most of the Dini tires are Dini tires that are involved that, that have to do with uh, partnerships, business deals, uh, sales, purchases, etc. You, usually, all these things started off with a contract. So uh, if if there would be a, cl- a clause in the contract that, uh, that 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 if we have any issues we're going to take it to such and such a base then, so then the, you would you, you would solve a lot of grief and a, and a lot right. of time and effort time effort and cost. Right. As, as long as both sides uh, read the contract carefully, I, I know of cases where somebody just uh, didn't read that line and then suddenly he was taken to some you know base then and and there's no way out. You know, it's in the it's a clause. You know, so one okay, has well, to read. That says that, that he has no one to blame but himself. If he, if he, or or his he, lawyer, he should, right? If he's signing a country, he should, he, should, he should read what he should read what he's saying. More than that, the halacha is, the halacha, the halacha is that, if, that if a person signs a contract and he doesn't read it, that means that he's basically saying, "I'm, I'm accepting it lock, stock, and barrel without knowing what it says." Um, right, right, right. So uh, yeah, yeah, people should read their contract. Um, maybe maybe just to finish, one one one, one more question. I know that Dachitayra. Is um, is considered uh, a special kind of based in terms of its procedure. Um, it has a very, you know, um, uh, upright and very, uh, very transparent, I guess, um, uh, procedure, which is um, it gives it a kind of a, a respect that other um, batidin, or not not all other batidin, of course, but some batidin, you see, 
um, because the, the new, the, the, there are no rigid and fixed proce procedural um, uh, principles that, that Bate Din um, need to run by, um, so often litigants will feel that everything is, is, is very flexible. They don't know what's going to happen next. They don't know. Sh should we have fixed clolem, fixed principles and rules for procedure? Is there a way of making Going to base in, you know, it wouldn't be the case that each based in is like a completely different world, but there'll be more something more standardized. Um, or, or do you think this is a problem? Or, or, or yeah, each based in should just do whatever it wants. And, and uh, it's, it's, it's definitely an issue uh, whether you could get all the body team together uh, to to make a, a uniform set of rules. I'm very skeptical about that. You know, it's, you know, you know what it is to get two Jews together. Mm -hmm. But uh, but definitely each 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 base in themselves should have uh, should have rules and regulations. Uh, for instance, in the Vada that we're that we're that I'm involved in. Uh, you, you go online, you'll see a very lengthy document of all all the rules and regulations that that are going to govern the base team. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's I think that's very important, and it's very and, and uh, the more transparency you have, and the more uh, the more um, uh, more perfect, also more professionalism. I mean, people yeah, expect right. Yeah, no, no, not just the more and the more um, um, how would you say hashkocha? The more um, the right, more, uh, more oversight. Oversight you have, the, the, of course, of course, that's better, you know. Uh, right. Right, and if you'll allow me, just one, one one final question, which is which is also sure. something that people often bring up, um, and that's a question of of giving reasons. Um, you know, somebody then um, uh, just give a psak, you know, uh, like, like the like the Gemara and the Shulchan Aruch says, you know, plenty chayev kach v'kach and plenty zake and 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 that's it, um, and and and. Uh, and you know, because there's no appeal system, so there's no formal need to give to give reasons. But often litigants are, are you know, left left kind of in the dark, and 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 they're, they're interested to, to to know the reasons. And but on the other hand, if you give if you give the reasons, you also allow um, you, you allow the litigants to start arguing with you. But what what do you think is is the best approach towards towards giving reasons in in a fiscal all right, so first of all, you mentioned about appeal. Um, Marshal, uh, by, by us in Darky Torah, we do have an, a, a process for appeal. We allow we we allow people uh, to uh, to appeal to to appeal our, our peace gate dinner. Uh, we'll, 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 there's certain guidelines of how how and when, but definitely there is a there is a mechanism for appeal. Mm -hmm. uh, also in the Vadim Bora, we have a mechanism for appeal, hmm. uh, appeal and review. Um, as to the question of the but meaning, and this is this is written into the. Into the the regulations or the, uh, the 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 code of conduct of the basin that there is a kind of formal appeal procedure. Yes, and and, and Darky Torah is written into the Shtar Biruin because we don't hmm. have a separate uh, rules and regulations. And uh, right. in Vadin I, 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 it's definitely written into the uh, into the rules and regulations. Could be even written into the Shtar Biruin also. I'm not I'm not hundred okay. percent sure. Okay. Uh, as to the question of Nimukim, most but they did him, they, 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 most respectable but they, they do give a certain amount of basic uh basic nimukim so that so that uh the the Baladinim can see where you where the basin is coming from but uh on the other hand you you're not gonna see the uh you're not going to see that uh, a basin generally a basin is not going to write a long chuva and with with with, with all their propulum and everything because uh, first of all, it, 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 will, it, will, it, will, it will, in many cases, it will just go over the head of the Baladinim anyway, right. and or even worse, you know, they'll they'll pick up on this and that, and they'll start nitpicking on this and that. But basic basic explanations, the, the, the mo most most reputable Baladinim do, do give basic okay. basic explanation of what what they've done and where they're coming from. Good. Uh, anything uh, that you'd like to add on on the question of. Uh... Uh, but they did. The question of, um, you know, in in your years of experience, how how are things moving? Are we going in the right direction? Are we going in in the wrong direction? What's uh, what's uh, uh, the? Listen, we're definitely going in the right direction. You know, uh, think think think. The, the more the more the more people that are that are involved in it, so then the 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 more professional it gets, and uh, definitely going uh -huh. in the right direction. But to say to say that uh, that we, we've gotten there already, no, we still we we, we still have what to improve. But that's, that's not just in Bodhidinim, that's in everything in, in, in life. There's always room to improve. Fair enough. All right. Good place to leave it. 
Uh, Rev. Uh, Tzvi Gardner, thank you very, very much for being with us, and uh, Matat Lacha, uh, going, going forward. Thank, thank you for the you. opportunity to, to, to participate. Call so, call to, thank you very much, Colter. Yeah, with us today on the show is uh, Harav Shmuel Binyamin Honigwax, uh, a dayan on the base Havad based in, in Lakewood, which also provides a kind of a national service across the United States of, uh, of uh, giving Dintera, of uh, a based in forum, uh, for disputes uh, across the United States, a number of branches. Uh, Rabbi Honigwax, thank you very much for being with us today. And um, if I can start with, um, if I can start with a, a, a general question about about based in uh, procedure and, and based in practices, because um, I think perhaps one of the challenges today is that many of the litigants who are going to be coming to based in are influenced by the kind of general culture which is out there in, in the Western world in general, uh, the general kind of legal culture, which has a number of, of, of assumptions. Uh, for example, that Piske Din, uh, that decisions have reasons, and, and that there's an, generally there's a right of appeal. Um, and even in terms of some of the, the, the basic content, people's kind of expectations, both in, in terms of the uh, procedure and, and even in terms of some of the content, for example, Din uh, Nizakin, that that are Pete Interior, that Grama is part of, which is strange for, for, for I imagine, for many litigants uh, coming in from um, the general assumptions of, of Western culture. And, and the question is, how, how in based in uh, do we deal with that? Um, should we adopt part of that uh, kind of uh, general legal culture into the based in system? Or, or should we say we have our own system, it's an authentic system, it's, it's the way uh, that Din Torah is, and, and whoever wants to come to, to base in to receive din Torah, which is what you have to do al pi al pi uh, so that's what you get. And, and even if it's uh, vastly different from what's going on outside, uh, so that that's how it has to be. Uh, how, how do you approach that in in, in the base in setting? So yeah, thank you for having me on. Um, it's these are all very very good questions. Um, they're questions which bother me a lot. Um, all the points you made are true. I mean, on the one hand, you know, it's hard for people to accept the way things are done in Besden because of the reasons that you mentioned and uh, other other reasons. Um, on the other hand, you're right. It, this is the you know so, this is the Messiah where we're follow, the Besden uh, tries as much as possible to follow the Torah, to follow the way that the, the Rebbeinu Shalom teaches us to. First of all, how how we conduct ourselves, and second of all, like what what uh, framework we use to paskin and to decide and arbitrate the cases. So on the one hand, we're trying to do what the Torah tells us to do. On the other hand, you're right that it makes uh, it uh, makes people uh, uh, frequently very um, unhappy with uh, with the with the Besan process. Mm -hmm. um, that being said. Um, I'd like to address the, the issues that you brought up individually and also in a more general sense. So, okay. Um, individually, um, let, let's start with the first point that you asked about. You asked about um, the fact that Besden doesn't provide the reasons for the Psak Din. Now, um, in my experience, I know different but they didn't do things uh, slightly differently. Um, our general policy is that if a person asks for the reasons for the fact then we sometimes give it to him on the spot. Generally speaking, our answer will be that we'll, we'll be willing to give you the reasons as soon as you finish paying whatever mm. money Besden was mechaived you to pay. Mm. Now, in our experience... And, and that, that's because you've had that experience, meaning once you give the reasons, people start hackling and, and they say you got it wrong and, and, and then they're not willing to pay, that these things happen? Right. So, so you're bringing out a, a, an important point. I mean, when you're talking about courts, so court has, uh, a, they, they, they're vested with authority, which is, they're backed by the authority of the government, and, and because of that, the court doesn't have to be concerned that their ruling won't be carried out. Whereas in mm -hmm. Besden, Besden obviously does, and certainly in the United States, Besden does not have any authority beside the government. We do have authority as far as um, the arbitration agreement is concerned. Once somebody signs arbitration agreement, that can be enforced by court. But that's not always the venue that people want to use to enforce the psak din. It's certainly mm -hmm. better for the litigants if the psak will be carried out without 
forcing the litigants to, after they've gone through the entire investment process, to, to then take their dispute to court and try to get payment in that way. But it, it, it's fairly, isn't it? Is it is it a complicated process to get the sacked in to get it approved by the courts? That, that's that's complicated. It, it, could be, it costs money though, and it's money and time. Costs money. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot more satisfying to the litigants if the the bezin is the end of the process, and they can say once we got our sacked uh -huh. in, we're, we're going to get our money. Whereas uh -huh. the bezin gives out the reason that can frequently be used to try to sort of dilute the, the power of the Psaktin by, by showing that to, to Rabbanim who will then back their congregant, for example, and say, no, mm -hmm. this Psaq doesn't make sense to me. So it, it, as a vehicle for making sure the Psaq gets carried out as quickly and as easily as possible, Bezin will say, look, we'll wait until you, you fulfill the Psaktin, and then we'll give you a reason. Then you can look it over and, and argue with us. And in our experience, once the psaktin has been carried out, the litigants very rarely are interested in the reasons for the psak. From our experience, it, it, even there, there were times when people did want the reasons, and it was fine. We didn't have any negative feedback. That being said, there are but they didn't that won't necessarily do that, and they also have a very good point, because like I was mentioning before, a lot of the power that a Besden has, we don't have that much power, but a lot of our power that we can use to help people arbitrate their disputes without having to go through the court system is the fact that there's, a, there's some respect for Bate Din. And there are Bate Din that are concerned that if they, if, the reasons, if they give out the reasons and people look at the reasons and they don't like it, that that will somehow diminish the respect of the Besden and, and, and prevent us from helping people as much as we're able to. Mm -hmm. I mean, but, uh, I mean, maybe, maybe the tzvia though is that the reasons have to be uh, more convincing. Uh, you're saying that it's that's difficult. Meaning, you know, uh, you have you can have many different opinions, and and uh, and uh, you know, because there is a halacha mehechan dantani. You know, if if it's a complicated case, and you know, so there, there could be a chiyuv to give the reasons. But in in such cases, right. you well, also, uh, we, 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 the, the 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 position of of the bate din is that halachically we're not obligated to give the reasons. You're right, there are situations where Bezin will be obligated to give the reasons, but generally speaking, in a, a normal situation where there's no reason to be concerned about, about the process, Bezin is not obligated to give the reasons. And, and Bezin feel, there are, but they didn't have feel that since it's not, it, it may diminish the respect of the Bezin, it's better not to give the reasons. Like, like I was saying mm -hmm. before, you know, somebody can take it to a Rav, his Rav, that, that he supports and the Rav has a reason to find fault in the Psaq of the Bezdin because of the fact that his congregant got wronged, so to speak, by the Bezdin. So right. it gives people, it gives the Rav an incentive to try to take, you know, destroy the Psaq Din, and that, that's a position that it, 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 we don't, it, somebody didn't feel it's not beneficial to have that thing happen. Right, I, I understand. I mean, this, this gets into the other point that I mentioned about, about the right of appeal. I mean, the, the reason why courts uh, have to give all of the reasons is because there's a right of appeal. And, and of course, in Basin, there's no right of appeal. But even, even though there's no right of appeal, perhaps, you know, uh, perhaps we could have a kind of internal appeal that they could go back to your Basin itself and say, listen, you gave a PSAC based on, on X, Y, Z, and these are the reasons you've given. Uh, uh, and, and, and we have, you know, we, we want to tie on on those reasons, uh, you know, we, or we spoke to a Rav, or we spoke to whoever it is, and, and we have these tainas. You know, w would you accept such a a kind of uh, appeal, uh, uh, informal appeal, or you say, no, once we've given the psaq, that's it, you know, I'll pay, I'll pay Allah, you know, it's finished. So certainly, yeah, I mean, look, if, if, if somebody can show based on the reasons that we give that we were wrong, 100%, we would have to back out, no question about it. There was one somebody that, uh, that called up after the psaq was given, and he tells us that, you know, the, I spoke to Gdoyle Ador, and they said that the psaq is terrible. I told him, Gvaldik. Hmm. Have one of those hmm. Dolly Adar call us, and we'll be happy to discuss it with him and back down. He refused to do it. So, like, you know, it's, uh, it's very hmm. easy to talk about it, but, like, when it comes to Lamaisa, when we, give, when we actually offer that to people, go ahead. Have somebody call us up. We'll discuss it with him. If we're wrong, we'll back down. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't happen that much, you know? Mm -hmm. Right, but there's nothing formal, though, meaning you, there's no, you know, I know that there are, but some but they didn't, it's like a rare thing, but there are some but they didn't that, you know, in order to give people this kind of uh, um, more confidence in, in the PSAC, they say, you know what, we're going to institute like a, a formal appeal that you can hear this, that the case can be heard by 
other by another panel or something. You don't have anything like that. Meaning it's it's you, right. It's not you know, right. It's not set up formally. It certainly is a good idea. It's it's a good thing to do. Um, but again, in my mind, that you know, I hear what you're saying. You know, that it is possible technically to set that up as like an as like a, you know, and not a, not a, an official appeals appeals process, but like sort of an arbitrary appeals process that doesn't accept upon themselves. Right. But, you know, it really right. strikes to the root of what of, of the real issue with with the Besden system nowadays, where Besden is it does not have any authority vested in it, uh, you know, by by the the government, and even as far as the community is concerned, we don't have such a structured community, we don't have such an organized community, where the community can impose that kind of appeal on the Besden, which would be, to, in my mind, a very big advantage if if the community can be structured in such a way that the community would oversee the best and you would have like a panel of Rabbanim that would oversee what they did, I think mm -hmm. that would be an amazing thing. But I don't think that, unfortunately, the, that we, our community is not cohesive enough and doesn't have enough structure to be able to support that kind of thing. I mean, some communities also have several but they did, and and then of course you know that the you know each one is kind of in competition with the other, which makes things even 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 more even more difficult, uh, both in terms of oversight and in terms of um, having a central authority. Meaning, you know, once upon a time, the, the whole idea of Dayton was like a central authority over the city or over the community. Um, and, and now that that central authority is is I mean, I, maybe in some places it exists, but I think. Um, in the United States, it's probably difficult to find such an authority. Right. Yeah. It's a, that, that's a very big downside. Baruch Hashem, here in Lakewood, we have two, two Bate Din. We have the uh, Bezim Sharm and the Beis Havad. Baruch Hashem, we get along very, very well. And you know, I'll, I'll frequently go and uh, approach Dayanim on the other Bezim to ask them if I have a hard din Torah. I'll go and ask them, what would you mm -hmm. do in such a case? I try to get as much feedback. And input as mm -hmm. possible, just to know that I'm like covering all the bases, and I have uh, you know as much information as, as possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. The, the, the third the third thing that that I mentioned before is aside from the procedural aspects of of the din Torah, there's also the kind of the the substantive aspects. Um, and I just gave grammar as an example, but there would be other examples. For instance, you know a lot of a lot of contract law, um, you know sometimes in based in. Uh, we would we would be able to kind of throw out contractual agreements because of asmachta or because of kinyan dvarim or, or because of all kinds of things like that. That like in 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 regular courts of law, you know, you would raise eyebrows and say, you know, th this is like what what the whole of the modern kind of a legal system is based on on contracts and based on on things that halacha doesn't always recognize. Um, and and of course, uh, nizakin, you know, a lot of nizakin is 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 or might be. Uh, grammar, uh, or, you know, or, or different different aspects of of, of the interior that would pattern. Uh, how, how do you get around uh, issues like that? Yeah, so that's uh, another very very important point. Um, so there is a, a famous Drusha Saran that says right. that. I right, draw you down for he speaks about the din, the the, the sub supplementary halacha. You can write the din right. of the melech, or, right? Right. So so the Ran says that. You know, the Dine Taira really alone are not enough to create necessarily to necessarily create a, a functioning society. Sometimes society, uh, frequently society will have to make its own rules to govern itself. Now, again, that brings us back to the point that I was, I was bringing up before, that if society would be able to organize itself in a way, you know, Bezden can be a great benefit to society, you know, despite the fact that People frequently say that Bezin is not as good as we could be, which is, which is, you know, we 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 know that we're not as on, on the level that we could be necessarily, but it's a benefit for society to have a strong functioning Bezin. It, it would be an amazing benefit for 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 everybody, you know, to avoid machloikis, to to settle marital disputes and financial disputes. But all the, a lot of machloikis can be settled if there will be a strong Bezin. And that can only be created if you have a organized community that can give power to, to Bezdin, and an organized mm -hmm. community again, which can create these kind of changes, so to speak, to the mm -hmm. it, it add on like new things that are necessary according to 
the according to the changing financial environment. So changing say, circumstances. So right. Right. So if you, let's say let's say we say okay, it's, it's not it's not it doesn't really work anymore that grammar should be potter. Okay, so we could mm-hmm. talk about grammar's high loss day shemayim, but there certainly are many many cases where we can say that that we might need more. We might need takonos of bnei ear to be able to really settle things better, better than what we've been doing until now. And that is only possible by people getting together and saying, we need, we need this. If, if people get together and say, we need a change, we need to accept a certain, a certain type of norms that, that, that are necessary for us, then that, that mm-hmm. can be done. But Besden can't unilaterally do that because we don't have the power. I mean, you, you could theoretically, you could. I mean, you could write an established rule, um, you know, just like we most 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 uh, arbitration documents of Bate Din include a clause that you can do pshara, and and you can you know you have kind of a broad, uh, strong discretion of of doing all kind of things. You can also write we have also the discretion to uh, to be mechayev in, in grammar, uh, theoretically. Right. I think well, that, that, that is included in, in in the idea of pshara. You know, if we see that somebody is 100% wrong, the other person is 100% right, but the person mm-hmm. who's wrong won't end up having to pay because he's he's potter because of grammar. So Bazin can say, you know what, we're going to disregard that now because because you accepted Pshara and we're going yeah, to and, and you would do that. You 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 would you would do that sometimes in a, in a basin setting. Let's say it's a contract, and really he could get out of it through some asmachta mechanism. But you would say, you know, listen, this was the understanding between the both parties, and and even though you could maybe wind your way out of it, but we're going to pass on that you have like the basin would would do such a thing. I don't know. So far, I, I haven't. I ha- we haven't had a, a situation where. Where a per- the, the the bad guy ends up winning just because he had some kind of legal loophole, you know. The, the, it's usually more uh-huh. nuanced than that, you know. It, uh-huh. if, if we see that that the Ruvain is 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 the guilty person and and Shimon is innocent, then we'll usually there's usually something in the Torah that's in Mechai of the guilty person. That that's what I found uh, in, in all my experience in Bezin. Mm. Meaning, you you generally have the the tools even given. The, the kind of uh, limitations of, of, of the Torah law, but you generally have the tools to make sure that the kind of din tzedek, that, that the, the proper justice comes out uh, right. in, in spite of, of the, of, uh, of the takhanas that we could make, and, and right now it's, it's hard to make. Again, it's hard to make also because you, know, that you need a lot of trust from, from people, and because there are you know, different rabbanim and different opinions, and you know, it's, it's very hard to get people to agree to, to make any uh, kind of takhana. Um, right. That's true. But, uh, yeah. Right. But, but what about the din of? I mean, there's the a specific uh, halacha which which I find is is sometimes um, very difficult to deal with of of holachah nitva, meaning you know that the, uh, somebody has a tefillah and he wants to take somebody to a regular neutral based din, and then and then the nitva says, well, you know holachah nitva, I want you to come with me to I, I don't know where, right, to some you know, to some base and to some joint, and, and it might be a, a very different, um, you know, each basin has its own uh, procedure, its own attitudes, uh, its attitudes towards Dinah de Malchusa, for example, uh, and to, towards, you know, and, and, and then often the Nitva has this, you know, kind of unfair advantage that he gets to choose uh, the forum, and, and he can choose the forum based on kind of uh, already assumed knowledge of, of which but they didn't pass in kind of which way on, on different shilas. H- how do we get around this this uh, this issue? Well, usually when you have that kind of situation where the nitva is, is, is telling you, Tevye, I, I refuse to go to your bezin, I want to go to one specific bezin, usually that would end up in Bayrus, which is its own can of worms. <laughs> but mm-hmm. uh, well, Meaning they would do like yeah. a zabla, they, they would, they yeah, would they do would zebra. Zabla, right. right, because when, when both Right, meaning either Zabla or or uh, or, or end up in court. I I, I don't know why, right. but I, I I find often that it ends up in both. You know, you start with Zabla, you end up in court. <laughs> right. um, well, we we, we uh, also had, you know, unfortunately we've had a very serious problem where you have like these Bate Din that are like some some fellow comes along, not necessarily knowledgeable person, not necessarily a good ethical person. And he'll open up a bez, and then whenever anybody tries to get somebody to come to a respectable bez, and the other person will say, "No, I want to go to that, that, uh, that low life." And 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 that again, that, that's bringing us back to the situation where people, out of desperation, will do things that ends up ruining everything for everybody else. Because 
if, if people, if, if you'll have one person who, because he's, he's in a financial situation that he feels he can't get out of, he'll go ahead and use and, and, and promote somebody who's, who's destroying the system, so that ruins the system for everybody else. And then nobody can have respect or be able to use the Bezin system in the, in the way it was intended to use because of what you're mm-hmm. saying. Because every Nitzvah will say, I want to go to that Bezin, which is not respectable, and they'll be able to... Um, to right, to undermine it, basically undermining, right. undermining the whole system. But then the other Batidin could say, we, we don't accept that. I Meaning we don't accept that as a Hodech as Achara a, as a Nitzvah. And you either have to stay with us or we'll write a Ksav Sirov against you and, and we'll give Rishis to go to court. Right, Is, right. Isn't that a possible solution? Right, right, it is. But again, like a Ksav Sirov is only as powerful as... As, as, a community, the, as, as a community, as a community gives right. it, right. If the community right. is not going to respect it, you know, so if you'll have people walking around saying, no, this, this Ksav Sirov is no good because, because I like yeah. that guy, right, right. then it's going to ruin the whole thing. Right. Just uh, uh, an, another question which, which I found... Um, that, that sometimes people um, have have difficulty in in uh, in, um, in in the basin system is when it comes to uh, often in, in modern kind of interactions, then rather than individuals, it's often interactions between uh, corporate bodies, a corporation, a limited company, uh, and so on. And and then the question is, you know, these whole corporations, they're kind of formed. Their whole existence depends on. Uh, depends on there being a legal entity which is formed under under secular law, under the law of the land, uh, and, and then and then the chayra, like all of the all of the dealings, all of the legal dealings, the legal handling of disputes and issues uh, within these companies um, uh, should be done according to the kind of the the, the law book, right? The 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 corporation law uh, that formed the companies. Uh, how, how do how do din um, address such issues without, of course, you know, unless perhaps they, they consult with, do they need to consult with attorneys? Do they themselves need to be experts in, in corporate law? Um, how, how do you deal with, with, with issues that come up that, that involve these kind of complicated legal entities? 100%. You know, the, the Bezin frequently uh, asked the opinion of lawyers. My, my father was a professor of law for many years, and Mm-hmm. I constantly call him to interpret the uh, language and to explain to me how, how to treat different entities, like you say. And, uh, you know, Baruch Hashem, also nowadays, there's a lot of information available. We're able to access a lot of information and find out what the law would be and, and, uh, and how the law would treat different kind of uh, entities. Mm-hmm. And meaning they didn't have to, you know, the, the, the Bata Din would, would need to really uh, gain a certain degree of expertise uh, even in the, in the in the in the secular law, in the law of the land, uh, insofar as it's relevant for uh, for the dinitura. Right, 100 percent. Right, um, and 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 uh, and when when you have issues, um, again, I, I don't know if this comes up every day in Basin, but issues like uh, uh, questions of medical negligence, questions of you know really like new questions, um, questions of um, of uh, you know, that that depends on 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 modern technology and 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 so on intellectual property uh, these kind of issues uh, you would say the same thing would apply meaning um, you know uh, one just has to actually study the the topic and and but Basin is still you would say Basin is still the right forum for for all these issues uh, yeah, you know there's no Basin does take everything into account you know we we try to. We try to, you know, broaden the the, the tools by which we pass in Dinei Taira to include anything which could be relevant. You have the Dinei Malchus, you have the Minhagim, and all the, we, we try to find out as much as we can about all these things to be able to pass and write. Right, M- meaning, you know, let, let's say if it's a limited liability company, um, that, then, then you wouldn't be Mikhaev, the person to pay money because it's a limited liability company, or you would say in halacha there's no such thing and, and you're chayev anyway? No, you know, you certainly, would... you know, if, if a person uh, you know, does business with an with a, with a, uh, LLC, then the, as far as I understand, the, the psaq is that al Din, he, he's not relying on the person, on, on personal uh, responsibility. 
However, you know, obviously, legally, also, uh, LLCs could be, uh, the, the judge could pierce the corporate bail. The bail, corporate and, bail in, in, uh, in extreme circumstances. But that's like a very, you know, nuanced and delicate question. When do you pierce right. the corporate bail? When don't you pierce the corporate bail? You, would, you right. would go the same way, though. You would actually, you know, think about, do we, do we now pierce the corporate bail and make the guy... Right. Uh, pay or, or, or wouldn't be? I mean, you, you, right. you would we actually. Would, we, we would try to examine, you know, what, it's obviously very hard because we, we are not the judge and we won't be able to. It's hard for us to get into the judge's mind and find out if in this case he would pierce the corporate right. veil. And right. it, it doesn't necessarily always depend on that either. It doesn't necessarily depend on whether the, the you know a particular judge would pierce the corporate veil. Every judge right. uh, rules according to his own, uh, his own uh, personal discretion. Attitude. Right, his own discretion yeah. and opinion, right? His own discretion, right. So. So, you know, again, you know, these are all nuanced, nuanced issues where we have, to, we have to take a lot of things into consideration. You know, are, are we gonna, we, we're going to consider, you know, how, how much the, the borrower misled the lender, you know, if, if, he, if he misled him. And if Besson feels that it's correct and proper in this case to be, uh, obligate him personally, then Besson might do that. It, you know, it all depends on, on the, all the other circumstances of the case. Mm-hmm. Uh, very good. Uh, any 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 other comments that uh, that you would like to add uh, about about the Bayton system, the comparison with the, with the legal courts? Anything that uh, you feel is important for our uh, listeners to uh, be aware of to to hear? Listen, when I went into when I went into being a Dayan, you know, it's 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 a very um, it's a it's, a, it's a lot of idealism you come into with them. You know, Bar Hashem. You know, from what I've seen from uh, people and. How people accept the uh, Piskei Din, and you know the, the the respect that people have for each other, and 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 the, the 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 how hard people will go and work not to fight with each other has been mm. it's been a very humbling experience to me. I'm I'm very very uh, I'm very impressed by by the. That's very, that's very nice to hear. You're saying that in general, you've you've seen a very positive uh, a response to to the Piskei Din, a very positive attitude. People don't want to. Slap on fights and disputes, and right, they want to get right. reiterated. Re- 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 that's very nice to hear. We've had very good experiences in our business so far, as far as my limited knowledge is. But you know, everybody has has their own experiences. But uh, Baruch Hashem, we've had. Okay. We've had, I, you know, I'm I'm very impressed. You know, people really want to want to resolve their disputes. They don't want to fight. You know, be, even in business, people avoid saying uh, mean things to the other person, even if uh, they, they think that it might. You know, in the heat of the moment, they will be tempted to do so. But people try to be. All right. Uh, it sounds. Uh, uh, Rabbi Honigwax, thank you very, very much for uh, for being with us, uh, for the illuminating conversation, and uh, in the future, okay, thank you, thank you. to stay with your experiences, to carry on this way. Thank you. So with us on the line uh, today is uh, Tuvia Stern. Tuvia Stern is an attorney in Eretz Israel, specializing mainly in uh, family law, but not exclusively. He appears in Pate uh, Din, whether... Uh, the, the state party din or private party din and also in courts of law uh, across the board. Uh, Tervia, thank you very much for being with us today and uh, also as, as a good friend, it's much appreciated and I always enjoy conversation with you. And um, just to get started, um, as somebody who appears both in the court system and in the party din system, I'm sure you've heard uh, of this kind of common perception that people think that it's harder to get uh, din Torah, to get justice uh, through the Bate Din, that, that, that the Bate Din have a certain uh, difficulty or difficulties, uh, whether because of, of, of community issues or because of the internal structure of Bate Din in, in paskening the, 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 the Din Torah, the, the justice that, that, the, that the Tzadim uh, are coming to receive. Uh, can you identify with that or can you tell us about your, your perception, your experience with that? Okay, I'll start off with uh, an observation that the main issue is a premise of the question, and I'll say that definitely many people feel the uh, express the feelings that you uh, expressed in the question. I would say even maybe most of the people, most of my clients, uh, have said things uh, to some extent, you know, uh, expressing their concerns with whether they were going to get justice or they received justice or or whether they had. Uh, the Diana weren't listening to them or, or weren't, you know, poskening the din as they saw it was supposed to be. So I've heard that complaint many, many times. And I think there's, a, as I said, a fault in the question itself in that 
there's an assumption that that is what you are going to the Besdin for. The assumption is that a person files a lawsuit or goes for Din Torah in order to get justice. Um, justice is an abstract ideal, but it is not something that a person who is go, go find themselves in Besdin or in court should be looking for because they're not going to find it there. It's a ideal. It's nothing practical. A person goes to court. A person goes to Bezdin Lahavdil for very particular reasons. Someone owes them money. They have an issue in a matrimonial matter. There's an issue of custody. They're looking for a legal remedy. The Gemara says the Koyvlekeeva Ozla Beasia. Person has a pain. They go to a doctor. Okay. They're not. You're looking for a solution is some kind of a practical result and that's why you go to a bezdin if you are looking for people to hear you out understand you to fix the world create justice you're going to be disappointed because you're not going to find it and this is a uh, one of the uh, introductions i give to my clients during the intake or at the beginning of a case to lower the expectations and not start off with that faulty premise that is supposed to provide justice Okay. Well, let, let me let me uh, let me come in on this just for for a second. I mean, uh, one 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 I think re- a reasonable yardstick, a reasonable you know way to to assess um, whether a person uh, feels that that he's he's gotten you know a, a proper ruling, you know whether you call it justice or you call it you know something else, is is the way people come out of based in. You know, somebody always somebody generally loses. One side loses, one side wins in in based in and and in court and if the ruling is a ruling which is which is you know has has is is founded on um on a on a psaac which is reasonable and a psaac that, that makes sense and it and it and it has a, a a justice to it then even the side that loses will at least sometimes come out and say you know what i got a fair hearing um you know the 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 panel heard my arguments and they weighed them up and I lost because the, the psaac wasn't in my favor because the din Torah was against me or in court in Havdil because because the law went went didn't go my way but but you know at least I, I know that, that there was something fair going on here uh, that I got my day in court or I got my day in basin um, if you compare people coming out of, of basin and coming out of court uh, let's say the losing side because the, the, the winning side okay they're happy either way but let's say the losing side would you say that's a fair comparison? Do people come out of basin and, and and come out of court in in a similar way, saying, "All right, I, you know, we did our best, and and uh, and and the law or or the dintera came out against us," or do people have a, a greater grievance in in basin or in court? You know, is, is there something which is inherently more uh, difficult for the the Bali din to come out and feel that they've had a fair hearing, that justice has been done? From my experience, I would say as follows: regarding sort of after they receive the ruling, after the case is over, people have the same kinds of complaints both in the court and in the Besdin. Um, I work in Israel, where we have an official government Besdin, which means this is not like in the U.S. or in England or other countries where uh, the Batidin in matrimonial matters are voluntary and you have to sign an arbitration agreement. In Israel, the Batidin here have the authority, they have the power to rule. They have the ability to force, to compel people to appear in front of them and to, and to carry out their rulings. And I can say that overall, uh, I would say that the, the, the same clients that are looking for justice are upset with, both in the Besdin or in the court because they didn't find it. And the clients who are there to get results, the clients who are there to to resolve issues as opposed to going for some kind of therapy or to look for people who understand them, those people um, are usually happy. Uh, they might be unhappy because they got a bad result, but they don't have the same amount of disappointment as those who are looking for justice. Now, you mentioned two separate issues, which we have to uh, uh, make some sort of distinguish between two issues that come up. One issue is the integrity of the process. You call it fairness, right? whether it's fair. The other issue is the result. And those are you can have a scenario where you had a completely fair trial, right? You had a dinner where the day on them heard everything out, they heard all the tinnitus, but the result was not what you wanted because the din is not with you. And this happens a lot, and this is definitely 
it results in a lot of disappointment when people have certain perceptions of what the law should be, the halacha should be, uh, when it's not that way. This comes up in a lot of areas where there's some kind of you know, disagreement between uh, what the place can hold about uh, certain issues, certain legal issues, and what the havdal secular the law uh, hold and people's perceptions are generally pa- based on cultural assumptions, which are from the Western world, which are not based on Jewish law. This comes up in many uh, things. So regarding what we call the procedural issues and the fairness issues, that's one thing. And the issue of the substantive issues, the actual way that the Dayanam rule or the Havdali judges are going to rule. On the issue of fairness and procedural fairness, I've heard complaints in all systems. I've heard complaints uh-huh. in all systems. And, 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 even, and, even, and even the private, meaning even the private part they did, you would say that in terms of procedure, I, I hear a lot of complaints about the private part they did, and, you know, each one has its own procedure, there's nothing which is really uh, fixed, it, it's very flexible, and, and, you know, whereas in court things are more, more rigid. I mean, I guess you could read this but, both ways. But, and, and that's a two-way street, that's, that's a two-way street. Let me, let me give you an example. Courts are very, very, very strong, go strong with the idea of what they call in Hebrew, Sofiyut Hadiyun. It's a principle that when there's a ruling and the judge ruled in favor of one part or the other, you might have a right of appeal, but then after the appeal is exhausted, your case is over. You can't keep on going back to the court with new pieces of evidence. Halacha essentially does not accept that. Halacha essentially states that if you have new evidence, which you didn't have before, you can come back and ask for a retrial. And in Israel, under Israeli law, for example, a retrial will happen in such a case. In criminal cases, in very, very extenuating circumstances, there's a case that's you know, in the media right now about DNA evidence that was uncovered, that there's a, a murder trial being reheard. But in civil cases, very, very rarely. It's got to be that there was some kind of fraud perpetrated by one of the parties. So that's a huge difference. Now, that goes both ways. On the one hand, a case can be a real, but that can be annoying if you won your case. And the other guy is, is a nudnik and is coming back with, you know, bothering the day on them to rehear the trial when the issues are largely settled. But if you think about it, on the other hand, if you're a person that you didn't have a piece of evidence and the Diana ruled based on the evidence that was in front of them, and you want to, you know, you want to get the right result based and, and, and you show the Diana that you have this evidence. So you will, you, your case will be reheard in the court. You wouldn't have ever had that opportunity. The judge will throw you out because the rest of the cause, the case was settled. So that goes, right. both, that, that, that goes both ways. That cuts both ways. The issue of the flexibility versus the, uh, the, the formalism of the court, the court's, Look, I wasn't. I didn't mean to say that they're similar in the sense that they work the same way. But they didn't work very differently than courts. Um, uh, whether it, it, and this goes throughout the world, through all the all the bates in the world, which if they're more formalistic or less formalistic. But as a trend, they are less formalistic. As a trend, they like to hear the baladin more. In the in the in the Bezdin in Israel, the government, the, the Bedin Rabbani, uh, there's a series of takanot which guide how the unim are heard, how the trials are supposed to be heard. In those takanot, it states that the first thing the dayanam have to hear is the parties, the litigants. Right. Afterwards, they get, right. afterwards, they hear the, the lawyers or the toyanam. Okay. In the court, it's the complete opposite. In the court, the judge doesn't want to hear from the litigants. The judge wants to hear from the lawyers. Only right, if but it's more, of, it's more adversarial, more adversarial system. Rather more more than so, and less, into, and less of an impression of the litigants themselves. And that creates a little bit of, more of a, of, of a shtibel. Yes, it creates more of a shtibel because you have a little more screaming and a little more emotions coming out. But you also have an opportunity to get information without the filter of the lawyers. And there's an advantage to that. But the point is, right. is that each system, ha- each system has its own way of doing things. Okay, which, which, and, uh, which, which yeah. specific problems would you say are unique to the, to the basin system then? You know, what, what, what okay. do we need to bear in mind? Uh, how, how, can, uh, how can we try to find solutions to the specific problems in basin? What would you identify as those? Uh, me as a practicing attorney have had two uh, 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 serious problems that came up. And then I'll mention a third issue, which I wouldn't call a problem, but it's a, a different uh, approach that could be, for many clients, problematic. Problem number one, and this happens more in private batidinim than the Israeli government batidinim, but can happen in the Israeli government batidinim, not giving a clear psaq. Okay. If Reuven is, is, is stole money from Shimon, okay, and Shimon sues Reuven, at the end of the day, if the psaq is correct, is it? according to the din, the, there should be a psaq saying Reuven has to pay Shimon such and such amount of money. 
what we call some certain in exact right, but this is a, that's what it you know, that, this is this is the mission right the mission on Sanhedrin says uh is plenty uh, the last one I think is plenty at the is plenty at the that that's it like that's the yeah, it should be it's clear those. it should it should be clear you should be able to understand the psak without reference to anything else any other background information unfortunately right. i've seen many and many but it in many but it in uh, uh that We'll give a psaac saying whatever Reuven took from Shimon, he has to pay from him. Okay, that's good for the people who were in the hearing and heard all the facts to understand what that means. But when push comes to shove and you have to, oh, what you call, you're uh, not certify only, you're that. Saying not only, uh, you're saying not only do they not give reasons, but even the psaac itself is inherently unclear, meaning you can't it's even unclear. make out the psaac. Oh, yeah, for sure. In right. terms of the issue of, well, giving, it's, it's, of you, reason, you have this in professionals, Ayanim, meaning in, even in, in based, you know, Pate Din with experience and. You know, they give Sakim like, you know, pay whatever you're high, and that doesn't make sense. I've seen, I've seen Dayanam with 30 to 40 years of experience uh, make that mistake. Uh, and it's, it's almost just innocent. It was so obvious to them because they heard the case over and over and over. They knew that Shimon was claiming that Ruben took a certain amount of money from him, that, that uh, it, it, they, it was like, it, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was, you know, unnecessary to even state it. But it is necessary. And why is it necessary? And this is the important point. The, the, the reasoning of the ruling doesn't really make much of a difference. Um, under Israeli law, you, I'll explain. Under Israeli law, you, you basically, the, to make it very simple, you cannot vacate. You cannot, the court cannot vacate an arbitration award, like a Bezin award from a private Bezin, based on the fact that they didn't like their reasoning. They, they don't get into that level. That's, that's, that's the point of arbitration. You go to an arbitrator, you go to a Bezin, and, and whatever they think, that's, their, that's their, their prerogative. However, they will get into the fact of what does the PSAC say? What does the Psaac say? For example, does the Psaac have the right litigants? There was a case of a Gamach in Israel, and the Gamach sued a person who had borrowed money from the Gamach and didn't pay. Okay. Now, they went to a Dintera, and the Dintera was Gamach Ploni versus Almoini. Okay. Right. There was a Psaac that said Almoini has to pay money, and said the amount of money, right. to Gamach Ploni. The problem was, was that Gamach Ploni was in the end of the day, not really the baldin of Amoini. It was the bala gemach. It was the individual who was running the gemach. Okay. So the psak said gemach, but gemach was not an entity. It wasn't a person. It was really just the alter ego of this individual. That's a psak that you can't really use in Hotsala Paul. In, in, the, in Israel, uh, judgments are, are enforced right. by enforced. bringing them to the court. And then, then through Hotsala Paul, it's the equivalent of the sheriff in, 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 in the United States. That psak is unenforceable. Okay, so that's one right. problem. You, you mentioned that's one problem, but, but let me just let me just ask you the, about the reasons. Though I mean, I find this personally uh, very frustrating when Bate Din uh, don't give their reasons, and and I know that Al Pialacha, you know, Chishmish uh Simon you know that there's no um, no uh, obligation to, 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 to identify the reasons. Yeah, there's no obligation. Yeah. I realize there's no obligation, mm-hmm. but 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 you know, you, you would you would never get a a a, a court. A decision without giving you reasons, and and the reasons may at least it it you know it gives you the sense that that the court has weighed up all the different relevant arguments properly and and given a decision based on uh, a careful consideration of them. If you don't have anything like that, it's it's hard to you know you, what do you do with this? You know you you have no no idea where it's coming from. Wouldn't you think it would be a good idea that Bate Din should uh, should make it standard to give uh, the reasons? Okay, so on that topic, first of all, you mentioned secular courts. Under Israeli law, if a court did not give the reasoning behind a ruling, that itself is automatic grounds of appeal. So, right. so the Israeli court system on the secular side does take putting in reasoning very, very seriously. Uh, to get into the exact reason why how halacha developed this principle that you weren't required to give a reasoning uh, is you know, beyond the scope here. I would say that there is one advantage that in theory you get a psaq faster. Right? You get a psaq much faster. Um, instead of having to wait for judges to sit down and, and write rulings, uh, they can you know, work out the things and come up and say, this is my final uh, result. I, I t- t- today was speaking with a colleague of mine who has a case, and they have been waiting seven months for a ruling from a family court, court judge because she has issued a ruling. And uh, it, it, part of it is probably because there are certain complex legal issues that she has to, you know, you know, it's in Hebrew, but cross all her T's and dot all of her I's. Uh, and, you know, 
and in some ways, you know, justice. And in fact, they didn't. In fact, they didn't. You never wait seven months for a ruling. That's you you, you would you you would you would wait, but it wouldn't be because they had to exactly write the sock in the right way. There are some but they didn't like that. Okay, I you know personally been involved with certain bodies like that, but it won't be because of the issue of writing the sock. It might be the issue of other technical issues, just in terms of of docket management, that comes up. Some bodies didn't are much better with, you know, being on top of the cases. You know, and a lot of that actually depends. This will sound very, you know, prosaic and very simple, but it's actually just depends on the secretary of the business. Is the secretary on top of the day on and making sure that they're checking their cases, making sure things, you know, the rulings are being written. But in terms of the reasoning, there's another issue of, of reasoning. Um, it opens up a Pandora's box sometimes because remember, halacha in its purest sense does not accept the idea of an appeal. Okay. Uh, when they introduced the, in the Batidin Rabbanim and the Israeli official rabbinical court, this is in pre-state uh, mandatory Palestine, right? This is before right. uh, the state of Israel. The 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 British forced the the Dayanim to introduce the idea of an appeal, and they created the right. Beit and Gadol right. It was a huge, huge polemic between the various poskim uh, about whether or not such a thing is acceptable. Because in principle, in, in uh, the way we, you know, the halacha, the basic halacha is that. It, you don't you don't you don't start questioning other medicine. Now, what's the whole point why we have to have reasoning in secular uh, rulings? Because if, if if it was unappealable, then why do they have to put the reasoning? The reasoning is that you you have to put right the the nimukeb sak they should be able to appeal. But if Halacha doesn't really accept that even appeal, so putting the reasoning is is just essentially gonna frustrate the Bali din because they'll get a psak they feel is wrong. And uh, but they won't have any recourse now. Of course, you can always go back and and, and ask the dayanim to to revisit. Allah accepts that idea. If he felt that there was a clear intelligent sakin under certain circumstances, a dayan can be chayzer from sakin. In certain some cases, you can be mechay of a dayan uh, for making a mistake in sakin. You know, the shulchan aruch already deals with under what you know which what are the conditions for that to happen. But having a lot of reasoning in a sak can uh, sometimes create a situation where a person is very frustrated, right? And on the other hand. It'll just ask them to be mahar after the dying. So which is better, having a lot of reasoning right. where, uh, you can, where you can challenge where you can challenge the day on them, or having no reasoning where you're left in the black? Um, mm-hmm. uh, this, the answer is, I think the the, the the right way to do it, and there are about to do like this is is to have a certain amount of reasoning. In other words, a certain amount of explanation how they got the psak, but not necessarily uh, to uh, to go into that level of resolution like in Israeli court rulings, which are. Super, super lengthy. I mean, we're talking about in Israeli court cases, as opposed to American court cases, by the way. Um, uh, we're talking about you know, Piskedin of 60 pages, 100 pages. I, I, I used to work in the court, and I'll just add, I used to work, work in the court in Yushalayim, and I worked for one of the judges there who consistently made 300 page rulings, which were great because. They were like treatises. They were like you know almost like a PhD. But and he was he was enjoying himself. But the Tzadim were not were not enjoying it. Let, let, let me ask you about the. Right. Yeah. Let, let me. Let I want to. The... By the way, if you don't want to, I want to interrupt you on one more point. For, for this is more for Americans, less for people in Europe, but people from countries where they have a jury system for civil trials. Okay. Right. The jury doesn't give reasoning either. The jury comes up with a verdict. So. Uh, in, in some ways, you know, you do have legal issues that are settled, but the actual hachra, why we came to the decision that this person is chayv or not chayv in America, you don't know. You have 12 people that, or six people in some places that just decided the way it is. So in, in, at least in America, you don't always get that advantage of, of an explanation for how they rule the way they rule. Uh, let, let me, let me, just while, while we're on the comparison between the what they did and the court system, uh, it interests me to hear from you about the comparison between the way Tayanim function and the way attorneys function. The Tayanim in the Bati Din and attorneys in uh in in, in base in uh in, in the courts. Because of course in, in the courts you you know you have your 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 rules and, and I guess attorneys are careful to, to abide by the rules. Uh how, how does it work? How does that how does that compare in terms of the, the function of, that, of each uh, panel? That's actually that's actually the second issue I want to bring up about Bati Din, which is a big concern. Uh, um you have good tayanim, you have bad tayanim, you have ethical ones, you have bad lawyers, good lawyers. You have the whole you know, gamut of, of you know, just, there's, there's all kinds of people out there, and some are ethical, some are not ethical. The big issue is, and when it comes to tayanim, 
uh, and I mean Toyanam in private, but he did in Israel and also Toyanam in America. There is nothing you can do if they do things that are ethical. If you see that they are perpetrating fraud on the Besden, who are you going to go to? It's not a criminal matter. There's no, there's no, there's no recourse. If it's an attorney, even an attorney in a Besden, even an attorney in an arbitration, you can file a grievance with the Bar Association. Now, I'm not encouraging people to go ahead and start you know, filing complaints with the Bar Association, but every no, but lawyer But he knows that he can't do, get he away with murder because… Exactly. Right. Exactly. The, and for this reason, there were a number of uh that came up with uh, limitations on who can represent in the entire The RCA Besden of America, the Besden of America, definitely has a rule like this. I believe the, the Rev. Khan's Besden and Muncie has a similar limitation where… Mm -hmm. You, no problem. We'll let you come with the toyin. That's okay. But the toyin must be an attorney because then we know that whatever is going to happen, but there is some sort of, uh, of mirsa, some sort of, you know, of, uh, of, uh, of fear in, 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 in that attorney to do things. And I've seen as an attorney serious, serious frauds perpetrated on, on Batidin and on courts. And I got to ah. tell you, the, f the fear of a grievance, okay, as assuming that the other attorney is not some sort of sociopath and doesn't care about the law, but if it's an attorney that does care about his name and does care about getting complaints, even the threat, uh, the unstated threat of a grievance uh, based on being caught doing something that was fraudulent or unethical, that itself uh, can uh, get the person to either not do it or, or stop themselves at the last minute or even go back to the Dayanam or the Desden and apologize and state that they misrepresented something. And that is a huge uh -huh. difference between Batsidin and courts. And that is something that if, if I would, you know, if it would ask me what kind of rules to make for Batsidin, to have, it, to, whether we can limit Tayanam who are only lawyers, it's almost a Xerish and but because there aren't that many Tayanam. Uh, definitely in America, there are not that many time in America who are also attorneys. In Israel, there's quite a number, but in America, there aren't. But it, it also might encourage some of the Tayanam to just simply go to law school and get them into the bar. It's, you know, might, well, might not be the worst. Or, either that, or you can have a, a proper accreditation for Tayanam, meaning you could get a proper, you know, uh, I think they have that in Israel, right? You can be a Toen Rabbani, uh, an official Toen Rabbani, and then you could have a bar or the equivalent of a bar for Tayanam. Uh, yeah, they have that. In, in, in America, do, in America, due to issues of separation of church and state, that would never fly. But yeah, in Israel, they have it. Um, is the uh, you know the grievance board in the in the, in, in the bar of the Tainim as effective as in the, in the uh, Israel Bar Association? I would say not. It is definitely not as effective. But there is definitely yeah. In, in Israel, there is a recourse um, for for the Tainim. In America, that's the Wild West. Uh, right. uh, you know, over there in the in the west of the Atlantic, there. There's just, you know, everyone can, you know, put up a shingle. Any any person say that he's a Italian, represent people, right. and do whatever they have to do without any recourse. Right. So I understand the business of America, and I'm partial to that uh, approach in terms of limiting right. representation in the business. So, um, so you mentioned, yeah, yeah. So, so you you mentioned no, a couple of the, you mentioned a couple of the uh, challenges or, or disadvantages of of the of the basin system and, and ways that that might be uh, might be improved. Uh, what would you say are the advantages of, of Basin? Of course, the basic advantage of going to Basin is that you're going to get uh, uh, Dintera and you don't go to Arkais. Uh But but other than other than you know the, the basic halacha that you have to go to Basin, well, what are the advantages of the Basin system over what you see in the in the courts? Okay, so this, it, it, this is especially true in the U.S. and I'll explain in a second why that is. The avoidance of Chilul Hashem. When you have a case. In open court, where anyone can access those uh, documents, right? There's no limitation. The cases are uh, under rare circumstances; they're under seal. But most cases, even matrimonial cases, are actually uh, are actually public. Uh, anything that's there is, in, is is on the record, and that can be a tremendous chalashem. It could also involve invasion of privacy, information getting out that people don't want to get out. When you're in a business, you're in a dintera, you're in a room with th with three day on them, and that's it. It doesn't go anywhere. The 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 in the end of the day, maybe the ruling will go to court, but that's just the ruling. It's not you know the protocols. It's not the transcripts. It's not you know, the evidence. That itself is a huge advantage, and it's true in America more than Israel. 
uh, and I have to make a very important distinction between the kinds of dinters that happen in Israel and America. And when I say America, I mean all of America. There's you know, some cities that you have less of this, but in America, dinters can be over millions and millions or tens of millions or even hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, you have in America serious Heimish businessmen in New York that have all kinds of issues uh, for many, many reasons, including not willing to expose their net worth and uh, not willing to, uh, not wanting to have to get government authorities involved. They go to the entire uh, they, they, That's where issues are settled. This issues of fifty million dollars easily. In Israel, the Dinteris tend to be more about Nishishenim. This guy opened up a window. This guy wants to build another floor. Very rarely here in Israel do you actually have a Dinteris of a lot of money. It, it happens, but not as common in America. Uh, by the people way, there's certain trust, things, people don't trust about the idea and they're too Hamish or they're too. Uh, oh, oh, too, oh, oh too, no, 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 I think for another reason. I, I think that just Baruch Hashem, there's a lot of Pranas in America, and there are people there who, who are involved in business deals. In, you mean, you mean the Hamish, uh, the, the Hamish Oilam in Eretz Israel just don't have the kind of. And and the ones who do already are the kinds of people that are, gonna, are, are just going to go to court. That's, that's a sociological observation, not a halachic observation. But the result is that in America you have serious, serious cases being heard. Okay, but is Israel, it, is it, you know. but it's really a chilan Hashem. Though. What, what I mean is, you know, every, everyone well, it, has disputes. Every community has. Has issues and 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 disputes and misunderstandings and and contractual issues and so on. You know, going to court and and dealing with it like everybody else is is that such a chilul Hashem? It's a, look, it's a huge chilul Hashem, and it's better even the, in this din pruta kedin mea. Whether it's two guys fighting over whether or not uh, uh, who had the rights to the foreclo- foreclosure in 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 a, a apartment complex in Brooklyn, or whether some guy in Israel built without permission from the local municipality. Both are issues that is this kind of thing right. that people want to be exposed in in, right. in in the media in the secular courts, and there's a huge advantage. And again, there's also the privacy issue. And 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 people are always looking for privacy. They don't want people to know exactly what you know. Uh, you know, this is even a principle in Chazal that there's a Chazaka that people don't want other people to know how much money they have. Um, so that's one huge advantage, and it's nothing to it's nothing to make, to make light of. It is a it, 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 consider that when you go to court. You are putting your your whole story on the internet. That's what's happening, especially if it's in federal court in America, where it's extremely easy to access any federal document in any case. And I got to tell you personally, when I have to do a research on someone or a business thing or or a client consult with me, I go into the federal court website and I just see if they appear anywhere. And I find about all I find about bankruptcies. I find about all kinds of interesting information that people never dreamed would be on the internet. Okay, so that's one point. Yeah. Another point is just for, is, is, is which, a simple, which is a, which is a reason even if you have some. Uh, uh, even if you have a grievance with a, with a non-Jew, trying to take him to base in first. Maybe he'll agree. Well, I got, so I, I got to tell you something. Uh, in Israel, so believe it or not, but there's a Bezden called Nesiv Chaim, which has handled many, many dintayers with Arabs, you know, with non-Jews. Um, and they like it. They like it. They like the efficiency. They like uh, also the... the, 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 the time is uh, Rabbi uh, Fleischmann and his... Uh... Or, or Fleischmann, yeah. Rabbi, Rabbi right. Fleischmann is, 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 has a kolo, and, and as part of the kolo, right. he has this, this best. Sure. And, and I know for a fact that many Arabs, and believe it or not, Arabs actually, Arabs against Jews, believe it or not, which is kind of surprising, but, but really? uh, they appreciate it. Yes, they appreciate it. And also probably for, you know, it's under the radar screen. It's, you know, l- less exposure. And, uh, and you know, you're not going to have some, you know, I- I've seen cases where, you know, judges even threaten people. They're saying, well, what you did was, you know, borderline, you know, uh, you know illegal. You know, they, the judge right. even will threaten them to go to the police. You know, right. even, so when, it right. Right. even, right. even when it wasn't, even when it wasn't even criminal. To, right. Yeah. I would prefer to avoid the official channel. They want to stay uh yeah. Stay away yeah. from the official and, uh, state channel. Yeah. Interesting. And, look, okay. they, have, they have their own. By the way, they have their own systems of, you know, of, 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 of uh, you know, cadi courts where they do it also. But, but, but there were cases where they went to the, the, the best. Okay, that's one reason besides the obvious reason. You know, lifneim v'lo lifneakum why a person should go to a best. But there's another thing people have to realize: as expensive as Tehanim can get, and Tehanim can get very expensive, right? There are Tehanim in New York, you know, billing uh, by the hour, you know, several hundred dollars in the hour. That does not come close to Manhattan attorneys billing over a thousand dollars an hour. Okay, you you look at a case in America, uh, the the where attorneys fees take you in a, in a in a simple civil case, it can get to a hundred thousand dollars faster than you realize, and you simply don't have the money to do the case. Uh, mm-hmm. a, a Bezdin is much simpler. Yes, to honor are expensive, but again, it's a fraction of what will will cost. 
and you can actually get a result that you want, get adjudication, get get an answer. You know, sometimes people just want the answer in the case; they want the clarity, right? You want to win, but even if you don't win, at least at least the issue was settled. That you can get for a lot less money in Batidin than you than it will course in, it, than it's going to cost in the, through the court system. Uh, that's true in America. In Israel, attorney's fees are not as high as in America. You also don't have as much, you know, de- well, depositions and, and depositions in, in, in and all these have, other. You have a, but you have a huge difference in just paying for setting, for opening the case. I mean, just okay, signing yes. the case for a, for a base in costs you, I don't know, you know, $50 or something. And, and whereas finding a case in court could be very expensive. And that is a point in Eretz Yisrael that I made to a number of my clients that wanted to go to the, the secular court. They had a 10 million shekel claim, and right. I said, "Listen, that's a huge claim. Do you know what you're going to be paying for that? You know, just for the the the, uh, the, the you know the filing fee." And they had to get you know to ask the court to get you know a dispensation. The court, if you have, if you could prove indigency that you don't have the money, they can give you a discount. But you're still going to put down tens and tens and maybe hundreds of thousands of shekels on a huge case like that. And in that, there's no, now there is one Bezna I should add in Israel, the Bezna of Eretz Chem, the Gazit, where uh, they copied the court, Israeli court model and do charge a, a percentage. I believe the point is to discourage frivolous lawsuits, that people shouldn't just file like a 10 million check for lawsuit against someone. They want, they want to show people are serious, but in the end of the day, they do require a, a, a court fee based on a percentage, and that is a huge difference. So you're right. In America, maybe that's not much of an issue, but in Eretz Israel, definitely, you know, how much the budget didn't charge? 200 shekels a hearing, you know, 100 shekels a hearing. You know, it, it's it's very very inexpensive. It's very uh, fair. By the way, it, between the Israeli government budget and the family courts, right? There's you know two parallel systems in Israel where family court right. cases would be the divorce cases are heard, not the divorce itself, but the custody and the child support. The court fees in the Israeli in the in the in the business are much lower than in the in the secular courts. And uh yeah. you know I don't I don't think that's a reason people would go to one another, but it was interesting that the same we saw the same you know trend over there. That's another reason. So the the, the efficiency in terms of the the, the, the cost uh, of, of running a case is, is much lower. There's another issue. We talked before about the um, flexibility and the formality. Best thing can be a lot more flexible. Okay. Right. If they have to have to go somewhere, they have to go to a construction site. It's easy to get them. You know, right. uh, you know, pay a taxi. A few minutes. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Go, go try to get a, an Israeli judge to visit a place. Now there are some judges like that, like the judge I worked for. He was the kind of person that would. <laughs> get in his car and go somewhere and, you know, give a court decision allowing him to do it. And he would, you know, he would see the facts on the ground. Um, most judges, you know, sort of, you know, keep that distance. They don't have, they have that formality. In, in general, Bezin is much more Hamish. It's much more at home. Um, uh, you could, you, people can, can speak a little freer, right? Uh, for better or for worse, it's not, sometimes it results in a lot of screaming and yelling, which isn't so great. But, um, it can make people feel more comfortable and less intimidated. It's, it's, I'm in court all the time. I don't get intimidated, right? Uh, the, you know, the old, for me to get intimidated, maybe in Israeli Supreme Court because I don't appear there so much. So for me, it would be, you know, you know, like an intimidating uh, experience. But but the regular courts, I'm there all the time. It's just, you know, it's it, it, it's like basically, you know, going to shul for me. It's, it's, it's pretty you know, pretty Hamish so. also. Yes. No, I yeah, pretty, but, but, no but 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 for like one second, for the litigants. I know that they are scared. I have, my clients are always scared when they walk into court. In the best, right. they feel it much less, much, much less. Right. And that's another advantage, that which, you know, a psychological advantage, but it's there. Uh, let, me, let me just ask you about that, um, uh, to drill down on that point of the, of the Hamish guide. Isn't, mm-hmm. isn't the Hamish guide also a potential uh, problem in, in the sense that, you know, there are some Balidin, uh, some litigants that will feel Hamish with a Dain. Let's say the Dain is a, is a Elder Hasid. So and and you have a, a you know one one of the uh, Sodom is is a Belzer Hasid, so so the, so he'll feel very Hamish with 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 a Dayanim or with this Dayan, but but the other side the other side might be some I don't know some uh, a Litvish guy or or, or Kalino I don't know somebody who's not so Hamish with with Belzer Hasidim and then you know the the actual Hamish guy itself is is very particular meaning some people will be Hamish and some others and and you know especially in you know this is true for civil cases but Kalvachome for uh, for divorce cases, you know, um, uh, th- doesn't this kind of Hamish guide have an inherent uh, disadvantage in terms of uh, some people feeling uh, more comfortable and some people feeling uh, less comfortable and also less less understood in in a perhaps in a cultural sense or in a in a, in a kind of distance between 
uh, the Dayan and, 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 and one of the Sadim's world, um, you know, it, perhaps in, a, in an internal community based in this won't happen, but, you know, but Dayan have to serve uh, a range of communities and, and, and a wide range of people, uh, certainly in Israel. Uh, isn't this an inherent problem in, in the basin? It's an inherent problem and an inherent advantage. And a lot will depend on how the basin is constructed. Let's first talk about Batidim that are not sectorial, right? Not Machzik Yedas Bells, uh, not the Eda Charedis, which is the Yushalayim. No, like I mentioned, Sivas Chaim, there's a Yashav Atoiv, there's a Bushav Isis Bells, there's also. Or the state, or the state Batidim. Or, 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 or most of Batidim in America. The best Bezdin, and there are many like this, has the Litvak, has the Chassid, has the Kanoi, has the, you know, more modern guy. You put them all together, and what advantage do you get? You have an advantage. The Hamish Kite works there as an advantage when you have a mix. Because there will be a Dayan in the Herkev, in, you know, in the panel of Dayanam, that will understand things that you wouldn't understand if you're not from that community. Okay? Mm. Uh, there is definitely a huge amount of cultural misunderstanding. And by the way, this is for sure true in the Israeli courts. Because Israeli judges come from a certain socioeconomic background. They do not understand what it's like to be a poor person. They do not. Let, uh, they, they don't even understand what it's like to be part of the working class. There's huge, huge cultural gaps from the court. Now, the Batidin, you don't have that. Now, the disadvantage is that you go to Dintaira, and the Dayan was a machutin with your wife's first cousin's son-in-law, all right? And that, right. that can be a problem. It can be a problem. It can be a problem even if, if, if no one said anything. It can be a problem if someone, threw, you know, uh, after Kiddush, threw, you know, threw out a line to that dying, you know, oh, yeah, you have a dinner with uh, my cousin, et cetera. Right. Um, that can be, it can be a problem. It can be a problem. And it, it's, you know, that's the kind of thing, as a time, you have to be very aware and sensitive that there's no conflicts of interest and no issues like that. And I've seen cases, and unfortunately, one of those conflicts of interest cases actually went to the, 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 the district court in Israel, and the court court invalidated a psaq because of that type of a conflict of interest. And it was a big chil Hashem that it came out. Um, but, but, I, there is, the Heimish kite can be very good. It can be very good, but it's got to be done right. It's got to be done that, as I said, there's a mix in the, you know, especially in Eretz Yisrael, there's a lot of Svartim, there should be, you know, a Svartim on the Bezdin to give, you know, to, to understand, to understand certain things that, other people from other kilos won't understand. Now, you mentioned another type of case, which is a very dangerous type of thing, and this is where you really need a Tanyan to, to guide you in a Dintara, where you wind up in a sectorial Bezdin with a person from that Kihila, and you're not from that Kihila. And that happens. It does happen. Um, it should never happen because you'll never, you just, in, in the halacha is, halacha nitba, right? And normally, between uh, just the, the the sort of pre-trial phase where people choose a dintera. So if the nitba wants a sectorial bez, the tavel will say that I can't go there because it's your yeah, kingdom. Number one, not, not every mitzvah is is necessarily so savvy, and and you also sometimes have the the din of of the the state din, meaning the in Israel you have the state sanctual din, and then you know you might. So, so, the, so that, yeah, that, I'm talking about yeah, I'm talking about, about the momentous cases in Israel, like financial cases which are hard right. right. But between okay. a zabla or between the, they'll find or oh, whatever. Some, the, the case, the, 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 I'll tell you where it really comes up is where a person does a business deal with someone, signs a contract, and the contract is what we call an arbitration clause, ah, which says right. that every issue will be settled by this rub or by this Besden. And that's where you can fall into because the, the person who wrote the contract didn't choose that Besden by accident. Okay? All right? And that's something you have to watch out for. Now, you mentioned the state, but they didn't. One of the unique features of, of, of the state, but they didn't in Israel, which is, a, in my mind, a great advantage is that there's no games of choosing which Bezdin or not. Basically, there's a map. If you live in certain cities, you're put in certain but they didn't. And that's how it works. And then you're given a randomly assigned Dayanim in that Bezdin. Okay, so if you live in Rehovot, you get the Rehovot Bezdin. You live in Yerushalayim, you get the Yerushalayim Bezdin. And you can't start yeah, saying, I want to go to Bezdin. If, if, uh, if the if the Dayanim are all, uh, let's say, they're all Hamish Dayanim, and 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 uh, and and the woman that's signing for a divorce is uh, is modern Orthodox, you know, that you know me, or a secular for that matter. You know, you ha you ha you can have a real uh, uh, you know lack of understanding, as it were, between the Dayanim yeah, and, and, and the litigant. I agree with that completely. But I'll add that, like I said before, in the second courts, you have that same thing. I, I'll tell you where this came up. This issue came up a lot with, with ruling on child support. The family courts, historically, it's changed in the past year and a half, but gave very high, very just large amounts of child support awards. And it made no sense. 
this was a, a family that was living on a certain kind of budget, and now the court rules you know, that the, the, the father, and the, 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 traditionally, the father had to pay an amount of child support that was more than that they, have, they ever used on their, spent on their kids when they were together. Why was that? Because the judge was you know, used to a salary, you know, a, you know, a respectable salary, university educated. So that cultural disconnect happens really wherever you're going to go. Now, the particular uh-huh. issue that comes up which is, uh, you know, it would be a little more sense of the topic, but I would call, you know, uh, you know, connections or things like that. That is something where it's very useful to have a Toyin, but not just a Toyin, but a Toyin who's familiar with that Bezdin. They will be able to spot any kinds of conflicts of interest. And I can tell you that, especially now in Israel, in the state government of Batidin, when there is a conflict of interest, the, the Dayanam will recuse themselves. Uh, it happened to me uh, three months ago. There was a conflict of interest due to a family connection or that kind of a thing. The, the, the case was... And the Dayanam uh, brought this up themselves, but without the time bringing it up. The Dayanam themselves brought this up. Because, uh, uh, again, they're, they're, in Israel, the, the Dayanam, like you mentioned, the Tayanam here, are also uh, subject to um, you know, uh, grievances. And they're, you know, they usually are happy to be makdim or for kodem or maka and not have to wait till you know one of the parties. Or sometimes they'll do is they'll raise the issue and say, listen, they'll put everything on the table. They'll say the father of the do, of the boy. I do, I do will, agree. Do you agree for us to carry on, given the fact that there's some connection or some friendship or some I don't know. My wife's cousin knows, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah, it is. They'll, they'll put they'll, they'll put it on the table. And uh, and that's that can be very helpful. However, it is definitely an issue. There is no question, even if it's not a a, a technical reason to 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 invalidate the dying or you know to, to get them to recuse themselves. Um, this issue that you mentioned of the Hamishkeit and, and the fact that everyone dives in the same shul is definitely uh, an issue. It really it definitely comes up. Um, it's just the Jewish world is very small. The Fulm world is a very small world. Everyone, if you, you know, the, the, the degrees of separation between anyone in the film world is probably no more than one or two, right? And, uh, and, and that means that, you know, that very likely, if you don't know the dying yourself, you know someone who knows the dying. And, and that goes for the other side. It's definitely an issue. It's definitely a concern. And, it, right. you know, again, but, but again, as I said, but there's also an event that they do know the party. Now, you mentioned a, a different case, which I want to mention about, about secular people in private Bat Um A very interesting anecdote which um, I had a secular client of mine. Most of my clients are from, you know, just you know, Miteva Dvarim, that's how it works. But I had a, a client who wasn't from. It was actually a divorce agreement where, you know, where the both parties agreed there was no litigation, but I was, the, you know, I followed them through through the agreement and through the get. We, we did the get, and my client comes to me, the wife, and says she didn't understand why she didn't do anything throughout the whole get. I said, what do you mean? Well, I didn't do anything. The husband was sitting there telling the soifer to write, appointing the Adim, being Mavatel Modoyas, doing Heter, wow. you know, doing Atar and he, you know, he was, he was running around with the soifer doing all this stuff. All the men were doing things. Me as a woman, I did nothing. Now, it was interesting to me, it was eye opener, because that's something that no firm person in the system would have ever thought about. Right. Of course, that's what the woman does. She receives the get, right? She receives the get. Now, she has to. By the way, receiving is a huge act. And it, that is, that's an act that cannot be accomplished without her consent, but, uh, but it is very passive. A lot of those perceptions on the part of secular people, if you have proper training of Dayanim, okay, you can help them. And I've seen Dayanim were a little – and after that story, I noticed there were certain Dayanim that were a little more attuned to secular people. And more, more they sensitive knew, to the sensitivities of – right. I now look, it wasn't like you know they have like you know the, in, in 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 the you know the more modern world or in the La you know, reform conservative world where in, in by marriages they had two ring ceremonies. So no one's going to get a do a two get ceremony where the wife gives to get the husband. No, no one's going to do that, right? But um, there was definitely Dayanam that knew that it was an uncomfortable situation for the secular to people. Explain, to, explain to explain more, to talk us mm-hmm. through it, to give her the support, exactly. the emotional support, whatever it is. Exactly, and they, 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 uh, and they know how to present it. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're going to have to finish because we've, we've been uh, going for a while. Just a final mm-hmm. thing, you know, you you know the, you know, you you've been in America for years, you've been in Israel for years. Give me, you know, the the two cents on, you know, where where would you rather go to the interior? You know, what what are the basic, you know, but but you know, really the the two cent version of this question. A, a, a specific person, or you mean in which country would I rather go? Which country? Which country? <laughs> okay. 
uh, listen, say that I'm a Zionist with, with a lowercase Z or a capital Z. Say that I'm, uh, uh, you know, just you know, I'm, 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 so whatever you want to say. I like a lot of the Basi did in Eretz Yisrael. I uh-huh. find that, I, I'll tell you why, very simple. I find yeah. that the Toyanim, the Toyanim that come to the Basi in Eretz Yisrael, tend to be Tamid Chachomim and Dayanim, okay, who uh-huh. could, themselves could have been a Dayan. And therefore, it makes the cases a bit, in my mind, on a higher level. Now, remember, we're not talking about a lot of money. Usually, the cases are not a lot of money, but I do find that it's on a higher level. I'm not saying there aren't Tamil Chacham and Wotan in America. I'm not saying there aren't things, but, but uh, from what I've seen, I've seen, you know, I, I was a little underwhelmed by, by many of the things. Again, my experience is mostly here, but definitely in Eretz Yisrael. And in specific, you know, I mentioned a number of Bate Dinah, in specific Bate Dinah that I, I very much appreciate in terms of just the Seder and how they run them, you know. Uh, but there are up and coming about in America that are doing very good jobs, and and uh, and you know uh, I've heard great things about certain Batidin, new Batidin in America that are just a little more, um, you know, streamlined, uh, right. you, know, you know, aware of the issues that come up. Um, but yeah, definitely right. artists well. There's no question. In ter- in terms of uh, in terms of divorce cases, then of course it's it's completely incomparable. Artists well. This is, you know, the, the state, the state court. So you get a summons, and if you don't give a get, you get put into prison. It, it's a whole different world. America is a disaster. America is a is a ticket is a walking time bomb when it comes to divorce issues, because there are people running around, rogue Dayanim, uh, doing uh, uh, getting or giving hetemera bonds or uh, matter women to marry without a get without any basis, without having trials, without having proper uh, dinteras, and it's just, you know, it, 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 it's, it's really, really problematic. In Eretz Yisrael, uh, for whatever criticism people have on the system, and there's a lot of criticism, but we have a system, we have checks and balances, right? We have, as you said, the ability to put people in jail, the ability to force people, to, to compel people to, to carry out uh, the, 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 the peace they did. It, 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 in America, it's Ishko Yosha Ben Aviase, and it's really Vahibi Meshvoy to Shrift Team in America. And really I don't go, see. You're, I'm, you're, this is this is Trump I'm, Zionist. You're, you're really, I'm very. I'm, I'm, you're really slamming, I'm, I'm very strong. You're slamming America here. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I'm, it's not America per se, but I'll, t- I'll tell you something. Um, there, in, in Europe, right, and in England, and in South Africa, and in you know, most countries right. in the world. You also can't force someone to go to Besden, but there is one thing that they have. They have central Besden, but they didn't. London Besden in London, you do have Kadassi also, but you know, basically London Besden is the Federation Besden. Right. Uh, right. You have a Federation, but London Besden is basically whatever. The Consistoire in Paris, um, you have in, in, in Antwerp, no, you have Bakhdi Kadassi, really, uh, right. but, but you have established Kihilis, right? One of the issues in America that it's just historically how it developed. They never were able to establish because now there are certain cities that, that did better. Baltimore, you know, mm-hmm. Yemen is of Baltimore. It has its own Dresden. It's a little more centralized, okay? But mm-hmm. uh, basically, in most cities, you know, there's no uh, there's there's there, there's no you know uh, central central authority, and it is cr- it creates a lot of problems. And unfortunately, I don't see a way out of it. Uh, I think there's just too many hashkafic and cultural gaps between the various kahilas. You know, I just can't see Hisachtas or Abadim getting together with the RCA and, and sitting down and saying, okay, we have to make Seder about Gittin. I just don't see that happening. And right. uh, it's unfortunate. Yeah, I, I, it's very... I, heard, I heard recently that the, the, Israeli, the, Israeli, uh, the Israeli law decided that, that Israel has jurisdiction over Jewish marriages, even if the marriage was uh, done abroad. So what you're saying is if you want to get out of trouble, just come to Israel. And, and is, 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 Israel is the, Israel is a much better place if you want to get a psak enforced in the area of divorce. It is a much better place to do because it, it, it simply there's, there's you have the force of the law behind you, uh, and not just the goodwill of the parties. So um, right. you know that's a huge you know it's a sea change between you know, between the, the the different countries. And again, America with all of the you know uh, separation of church and state, I don't see any way. That that can be changed in a legal way. So unfortunately, that's how it is. Good, uh, Tivia. Many, many thanks for joining us. Been a been a thank been you a for having me. Discussion. Uh, thank you very much. Speak to you soon. I Talk appreciate to it. Be well. Bye bye. Let's go to the the chosen winner of this week's riddle. I'm the answer to the riddle. 
and his binyamin stamina, by the way. Two things. First of all, it could be that the Ramam's only talking about Rikim, about men who have the Vaitera, the Vaitera, the Vaitera, the Vaitera, the um, but I think you could also say that for Ked, that because the Pasuk needs to tell us by Kormat Teva, Dafka over here, there's something special over here that there's a Mateva, and that would be that, as we know, Rochel Rak al Banel, that we need to, that, 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 the Kim Rochel is a place to Davin, and Christ all came out of Goros and all kinds of Torah, we go to Davin there, and that's why he's putting Mateva there, Dafka for the Kim Rochel, so we could Davin at the Kim, nothing to do with the, the Koran and the memory of the Tazik, so only in order that we should know where this Kim is in order to Davin. Thank you for your time. Bye.